to your family, your fans, brother, one of the people I've talked to this week, some of the stories I've heard. You're going to be shocked at who's calling in tonight. We've got some legends. Crazy, crazy, crazy line, Calling tonight. The respect that you garnered throughout your career, brother, Bushwick Bill. And I'm going to argue, just like Flavor Flav in Public Enemy, uh, Chuck D was the serious. Yeah. Flavor Flav brought the comedy and fun. Yeah, yeah. That's why Public Enemy blew up. You couldn't. Have, you probably wouldn't have blown up like that if it was all serious. Yeah. If the ghetto, if the ghetto boys in that Bushwick Bill, Scarface is the greatest MC of all time. He is the greatest. Willie D, to be honest, I actually personally kind of like Willie D better. I love Willie D style. Love Willie D. Willie D is an incredible MC. And he can rap. Yeah. But if it wasn't for Bushwick Bill being in the Ghetto Boys, the Ghetto Boys would not be the international sensation that they are. Bushwick Bill brought a lot of attention, a lot of everything to that group. He means so much to this community, and not just this community, because you got to understand, if you're listening out there, especially if you're a young person listening out there, the G- Ghetto Boys come from the golden era. Ghetto Boys are De La Soul. Ghetto Boys are Tribe Called Quest. Ghetto Boys are that whole era. They are from that era. N.W.A. Spice yeah. One. Yeah. All the stuff that really made hip-hop culture what it is today. Well... Not what it is today. I don't blame them for what it is today. But uh, <laughs> but, it, but what it became, man. I mean, yeah, Bushwick yeah. Bill is an integral part of that man. And his spirit, his lyrics, he will live on forever. And that's for sure. And to be, and I'm going to tell you, this is this is the song that set it off for me. Okay. Chill. Yes. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. And uh, sensitive listeners may want to tune out now. This is Damage Control. <laughs> On the ground now, see you. D.O.D., what's up? Just chilling, man, what's up? Get a ghetto boy. Call him down. Ghetto boys. Hey. What's up, Jay? Yeah, man, I got Willie D on the other end. What's up, Will? What's up, now? What's up, fellas? You know. Say, fellas. I've been kicking a few lyrics in the back of my mind, man. And I'm tired of motherfuckers disrespecting them because we're black owned and won't sell out. So check this out. We need to get together and go to that other level of the game and do it like a G.O. Damon. <laughs> you already know it was he. What's going on guys? So tonight we are doing a Bushwick Bill um, 
tribute because he just passed away. So tonight we're gonna do all um, Bush with Bill music and having um, people call in or come in for uh, Bush with Bill. John, I tuned into your um, to your show, but you guys hadn't started before I had to get in the shower. Looks good. What's going on, guys? Look, Marjiki. Say what's up, Ziki. Hi. <laughs> he says hi. He says hi. I have a splinter in the car. Huh? Yeah, I know. There's cameras everywhere, huh? At least mine's just my Facebook, though. Hey, Rain. You need to come over. I got my letters for you, too. Did you get your letter, letters? Who? Your letters? Your letters. You have letters in there, too. Hey, how are ya? Yo. What should we do with all this fucking pain? Somebody stop the pain. Tanya said, put on a happy face, please. You said, put a happy face? Yeah, she said, put, my girlfriend said for him to put on a happy face. <laughs> He's texting his girlfriend, his hoes. <laughs> I got a little bit of a smile out of him. Oh, a little bit. Oh. Hey, don't give me angry faces. Who's that? I don't want angry faces. the door when the door opened so I reached down and I guess I scraped the door when I was going down to get it and <laughs> part of the door that's why it hurt so bad nobody else but you I know <sighs> Hi, 
Trouble chill. Yeah. The only time we ever really got in trouble. I was I had left for a minute and somebody played the uh one of the late like G code instrumental or something, man. And it when you know, don't like uh, uh, yeah. he said some things. This is tonight, it's all for Bushwick Bill. If it's raw, it's raw. If it's raw, it's real, and it's just how it is, man. We're waiting on some important people crazy. to call in tonight. Lots of people to share their stories with about uh Bushwick Bill tonight. Uh, how do we get these mics on in here? Right here. Turn these mics on in here, man. We got the mics on in the studio tonight. Yeah. Tune in to 90.1 KPFC. Got it done. My name's Matt Samzala. Hey. We got DJ Chill. We got Zeke in the house. Zeke! Tonight is a sad night. Another thing. When I come to town, as always, for these tributes, man, it's uh, to talk about some of our fallen soldiers. And for those who don't know, and I think most anybody who's listening to this show would know, Bushwick Bill recently, he passed this weekend after a battle with uh, pancreatic cancer. He had, at stage four pancreatic cancer, to be honest with you, man, it went real fast. And that's kind of what happens with, with stage four pancreatic cancer. It, it is one of the biggest killers, the fastest killers. And to be honest with you, I've known the Ghetto Boys like since maybe 1990, 91, when they were recording We Can't Be Stopped is when I first met them for the first time. And when they told me they were still gonna go on a tour after he had been diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer, I was like, does he really have stage four pancreatic cancer? How is that gonna happen, man? It's intense. I actually, and me thinking that was me kind of having hope. I love the Ghetto Boys, I love Bushwick Bill, and I'll talk about this a little later in the show of how the Ghetto Boys changed my life for real. And I'm sure everyone in this studio tonight has a story. Young stars in the house, we're gonna holler at him in just a minute. Is that, hold up, hold up. It's cool. It's cool, Keith. Man, we're going to talk to a lot of people tonight, but our first caller tonight, Chili, you ready to bring him in? Yeah, yeah. Our first caller tonight is very literally another one of my favorite MCs. When I first heard the Ultramagnetic MCs when I was in high school, they also changed my life to an extent, man. I was like, I didn't realize rap music could be done that <laughs> intricately, man. Straight up. Cool, Keith. What's good? Brother, not- thank you for calling in. We really appreciate you calling in because I know... You working with Bushwick Bill is a dream to me, man. We're going to play the song y'all did, Mantronics, after after we get done sharing some memories here. But I always loved all kinds of hip-hop, man. I loved what was going on in the South. I love you and the and the, and the real heyday, the, the, the golden age of hip-hop, the real shit. Uh-huh. Excuse me. We aren't supposed to say, We can play it. We can't say we can't, it. Sorry. Yes, exactly. I haven't been on here in a minute. I know. So. But Keith... <laughs> One thing I want to say before we get into this, one thing I've, I've respected you as an MC forever, but you are one, you're from the Bronx. You're from the Mecca of hip hop, and you were literally one of the only MCs at a certain point in time, I think in the late 90s, who really came out talking about people like Sibo, talking about our artists down here in the South, in New Orleans, in Houston, Memphis, uh-huh. all through the Bay. You are one of the top MCs ever of all time from where it all started. And what I always respected about you was you were a voice for, at a t- at the time, we were voiceless. And I want right, to thank right. you for that. I really want to thank you for that, Cool Keith. And I want to thank you for being our first caller here tonight. Cool Keith of the Ultra Magnetic MCs is on the phone tonight with our Bushwick Bill tribute. Thank you, brother. How you doing, man? How you doing? All right. Man, it's hard. We're doing okay, but it's hard. We lost, yeah, I was we always lost one of our biggest the, um, You know, New Orleans, I, I was... You know, riding around with Beast by the Pound when I first came around, um, you know, when I, you know, really? way back, even when uh, all the stuff in the South, you know, I was definitely up on everything. 
No, that's real. You were you were public about it too. You were saying it in the magazines. You were saying it in your interviews about. I mean, literally, we were saying it down here. We're like, like Willie D said, the first song we played tonight was doing like a geo, and he said, the East Coast ain't playing our songs. I want to know what the hell's going on. The East Coast hated on us. A lot of right. people hated on anything that didn't sound like what pure, what they uh-huh. felt was pure hip hop. Well, uh, well, I had everybody's CD in my, in my, when I had, when I was living in LA, I had everybody's right. CD in my case. I had Ghetto Boys, I had um, Scarface albums, I had E40 album, I had Master P album, I had Fiend album, Skull Duggery, Mia X. I, had, oh. I, was, I was a variety by person to everybody from the East to the West. Uh, Karep album, um, all the albums in the South, the West, L.A., what, Seattle. What drew you to those sounds? Because, I mean, literally, you are part of the blueprint. Well, I was, I was into, you know, collecting everybody's stuff. I didn't have no boundaries. I, I, I was a, you know, I was a multi-buyer when I go to Tower Records. I would buy everybody's CD right. just to, just to um, check out the sounds. Exactly. International, you know, from different areas. Huh? I tell yeah. people all the time, like I don't listen to Kid and Play all day, but I, I bought a, when I was a kid, I bought Kid and Play because it was there, it was in the rap section, and you bought the tape. Yeah, you I, I, to I hear just what bought came everything. Out. Mac, Mac Moore, Mac Dre. Yeah. I, I just bought everything. Yeah. Man, well, can you remember the first time you heard the Ghetto Boys and how you felt? Uh, you know what's the um the the um. The other record was a big hit when I it used to come on the box all the time, you know, the um Robin Little Kids for Bags. You yeah, know, Mind uh, Playing what, Tricks. What was that one? Mind um, Playing Tricks on Me. Mind Playing Tricks on Me, you know, that was on the box, like yep. every five minutes. Yeah, yeah. So that 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 was the, that was one of the kickers for y'all. Yeah, that was on the box every five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Now chill, I don't know if you know this, but uh a few years ago at South by Southwest, I was there when uh, Cool Keith and Willie D first met, and I was like, "Man, y'all need to do something. Y'all really need to do something." That didn't happen, but then, not too long after that, Cool Keith and Bushwick Bill met, and Cool uh-huh. Keith and Bushwick Bill well, actually been, did been, get in the studio. I've been met Bushwick Bill in New York. You know, really? I to, okay. I used to see him downtown in Manhattan. You know, we'd get a forty ounce together for some time and talk. You know, he was he used to live in New York and Brooklyn, so yeah, of I, I used to. Bumped Can you tell me about those times a little bit? Mm-hmm. Like when you first mm-hmm. met Bushwick Bill? Y'all would go get, get a 40? <laughs> huh? And so y'all would go get a 40 together? Oh, uh, no. Uh, you know, we just be downtown. Uh, uh, you know, we hit a deli and grab a beer and talk for a minute, you know. Yep. Tell me about your latest encounters with them, though, because, I mean, the, the song we're going to play in just a minute, Mantronics, is incredible. Oh, oh, so oh, cool oh, to hear y'all uh, it, it, I was just thinking about the funniest thing was, like, uh, last time I saw him was about, um, well, I saw him in Chicago recently, but the, before that, I saw him at South, uh, um, Southwest, and we was talking, and the funny thing was um, we was riding in the car. I think, um... It was like a Rolls Royce or something, and uh, we was talking. So we uh, we was in the car, and the car was packed. And you know, he's a person that should have had a television, you know, a TV show, because a lot of people are, are on TV. That's not funny. He's naturally exactly. funny. Exactly. So we got in the car. He re- he said it's, we said there's no room. He made a seat. You know, a lot of them, like, you know, when you sit in the back of a Range Rover sometime, I think my man had, like, a his console was in between the seats. Mm-hmm. Like, the, you know, the stuff that you put the cups in and all that. Like, you sit in the back of a Maybach. He sat, like, he literally, he sat on the thing, <laughs> put a pillow behind him, and made a seat. But we was riding for a long time, and he said, this is a seat. I'm going to make a seat. That, but the way you you know you don't see nobody really ever sit on that middle yeah. part, and yeah. it's like when he sat on the middle part, that shit was crazy. <laughs> that was I was thinking about that today. Man. I said nobody else could do no shit like that. Yeah, no. So what what um how did y'all come about with this this, this particular record? Uh, we was just hanging out one day, and um he came in the studio with his manager, Jack. Yep. Shout out Jack Swiss, man. 
So um, we was there, and um, that was it. Well, they had Ireland Studios. Uh, Bill was living in Austin for a minute, man. He was he was back and forth, but he was oh, yeah, in Austin a lot time, and, yeah. and doing a lot of work in Ireland Studios, which I wish we had some of these recordings because one, th- one of the things I want to say about Bill is that man was so diverse. When his when this all pans out and people start really putting these records out into the streets, to hear to think about Bushwick Bill and Cool Keith on the record, that's incredible. But when you get into all the things he's been doing in the last few years, this dude recorded with singer-songwriters, this dude recorded with country artists, this dude recorded with metal bands, this dude recorded with rock artists. This dude was in the studio like, oh, you want me to get on your record? You want me to get on this? There's so much in the vaults from this man. And some of the stuff he's done recently here right before he passed like he was hustling to get another record done before he passed at sugar hill studios here in houston right naughty by nature came down did stuff with him tretch is supposed to be calling in a little bit to talk about about bill as well bill put in the work to the last second hmm. yeah yeah i mean he's 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 one of the definitely people that always want to get on something um and he's all over the place i remember at south uh, south he was like at 20 shows. Yeah. And he said, um, he said, I'm going to be over here. And I'm going to be over there. And he was going everywhere. No, Bill was the type of dude who would come in, you know, and, and everybody, if you're in Texas especially, but people all over the world know Bushwick Bill. But if Bushwick Bill walks in the room, you see Bushwick yeah, Bill. He, he's networking, for sure. He and he would come oh, yeah, in. He's he jumped on. There's so many. It's funny because living in Austin, man, the, the, the stories there are different from here, man. The stories there because it's a live music. You know, there's yeah, so yeah. many places you can walk to all these little venues and different people. He's walked yeah. in on so many bands. So many musicians right. in Austin have Bushwick Bill stories of him showing up. I just went to see a band who was kind of a noisy punk band called Dula here in Houston. And the guitar player and the singer used to be in a band called Mouthing. And I told him, man, I can't stay for the... I saw their show, but I was like, I can't stay any longer. I got to go to KPFT for the Bushwick uh, tribute. He's like, man, Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to come down there and tell the story of when we were playing in Galveston. Right, right, right. We were playing in Galveston, and Bushwick Bill randomly came in the building, asked if he could get on and do a verse with this band he never heard before. And they're noisy, weird stuff. They are not not some straight-ahead music at all. He went there, and then this, no, but check it out, the kid with the drummer from this band started interning at Sugar Hill Studios where Bushwick Bill was recording. He goes in and says, man, Bill, and Bill said to him, man, I remember you in Galveston. Wow. The drummer, random drummer a couple years ago. Wow. He was like, he he was floored. He was like, I cannot believe Bushwick Bill remembered me, (laughs) let alone my band. This is the kind of brain this guy had, man, and a lot of people do not give him the credit from the, from the reggae, that. from the reggae exactly. on down, and he was the man, and reggae, exactly. all that. You know, he was a very unique individual who we always mm-hmm. have to uh, respect and give it up to. And to me, honestly, Cool Key, seriously, mm-hmm. you being our first caller tonight means a lot mm-hmm. to me because yeah. you are. I mean, I'm not. You know, I'm. Gonna, I am going to gas you up a little bit. You are the upper echelons of rap. Yeah, you are one so. of the greatest ever of all time to ever do it. You set the blueprint for so many people. And, and I was like 15 years old, and I first heard MC Ultra, and I heard that stuff. <laughs> right, right, right. That right. turned me out. So we put was, in that work. I put in a lot of work, you know. I put in a lot of work. That made me realize, literally, you, and with Set G's production, I always say there wouldn't be a Dr. Dre without a Set G, but that's another uh, story to get into in a minute, late, right, some other time. Right. Said G influenced so much on the production. The Ultra Magnetic <laughs> MCs were such a pivotal group yeah. in rap, but uh, lyrically, you set a huge standard. And so for you to call in tonight, you are not only calling tonight, you're our Thank first caller. You. Thank you so right. much. Giving it up to Bushwick Bill. Yeah, yeah. It means a lot to us down here in Texas, man. I really mean it. Oh, yeah, you know, and love to the, um, the whole Texas. You know, that's definitely, um, you know, that's what we do. And me, you know, like, I'm working on my own album and stuff. So, oh, really? Really? Your yeah. 69th album? July, tw- uh, July 12th. <laughs> what did you say, 69th? 697th album. album. No, you, you've been seriously, so how many? How many albums did you put out? I don't know, about 40. Yeah, Cool Keith, I don't know if even yeah. Cool, Keith, cool Keith himself can count the amount of albums he's been on. He said 40, though. At least. But maybe 40. Jeez. Easily. But I record a lot, so you yeah. know I'm a. I definitely stay in the studio. We thank you for that. I'm so glad Dr. Octagon came back in the picture. I'm so always happy to hear anything from you, Keith. And uh, 
I've got the song right here. I don't think anybody else in the studio has heard it yet. I may be one of the few people that has this out here. The song's called Mantronics? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an um, unreleased. You might be the only one with that. Man, really? I might be. You know who's walking in the studio right now, Cool Keith? Oh, wow. Ooh. Daddy O from Stetsasonic is just oh, walking wow. in. Oh, Daddy O, tell myself, you know, what's good? Cool Keith just oh, that's crazy. Good. We got Cool Keith, our first what is he doing? What is he doing down there? He's here in H-Town, man. man. He said, he said, he said, he said, you owe him a verse. Where, where are you, uh, you in, you in A-Town? A-Town, no, we're, we're in Houston, Houston right Houston, now. Houston, yeah. Okay, okay, oh, I, um, I tell him, he, if he got my number, tell him to call me. He said, call him right now. I'm yeah. going to give him the number, I'm going to give him uh, <laughs> Eric's number too, man, we're going to make it happen. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was trying to find him. Man, you we're trying to, he said he was trying to, he said he was trying to find you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keith, we really appreciate you calling in, brother, for real. Okay, y'all be cool, man. Everything right. is good. Everything, man. And we're going to get into this song right here, Cool Keith and Bushwick Build Together. This came out, just this was recorded like last year. The song's called Mantronics, well, and I think it was recorded at Ireland Studios in Austin, Texas. Oh, uh, yeah. It yeah. Was. Okay, cool. You are tuned in to the Damage Control Radio Show, Graham, tonight. My name's Matt Zala. I'm here with DJ Chill Zeke, Skylar yep. Don. And we are doing it big the entire night for Bushwick Bill. Right, Y'all want to call in the number 713-526-5738. We got lots of special guests. Of course, Daddy O is in the house. Young Star is in the house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got lots of surprises tonight. Young Star to a young man. You got a Bushwick Bill story, give man. us a call. 713-526-5738. This is Mantronics. Yeah. I'm just chilling on the chucky tip. Southwest East. I feel like Mantronics. Mantronics, Mantronics. Mantronics. Mantronics, Mantronics. Cool Keith, Bushwick, Southwest East shit. Ultra magnetics, you know, ghetto boys, Bill shit. Come on. Dr. Octagon. Octagon. Dr. Octagon. Octagon. Cool Keith. Bushwick, Southwest, East shit, Ultra Magnetics, Ghetto Boys, you know we build shit, come on. Ultimate Eagle flying in that silver spur, Rolls Royce coaching like Steve Kerr. You know how Stu steer the wheel, playing in that stadium like Wrigley Field. The rhymes lay like strawberry lemonade, it's like Dave Kingman back on bad day, hitting home runs with Bill Buckner. Bush with closing deals, the track spinning on them two inch reels. Second base still, Dr. Octo ride the motor busy with extra throttle, Harley Davy looking crazy. Steve Adams playing center, they guard me like Stacy. So beast, releasing the great treat, no Hollywood act. And no make believe. I guess rappers are sharp with razor teeth. Shoes off the vocals, hot like a day at the beach. Cold burning like fire. You spin, wash, and rinse. Rappers ready for the dry. Like Mantronics, 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 Mantronics. Cool Keith, Bushwick, Southwest, East shit. Ultra magnetics, you know, ghetto boys, Bill shit. Come on. Dr. Octagon, Octagon. Dr. Octagon, Octagon. Cool Keith, Bushwick, Southwest, East shit, Ultra Magnetics, Ghetto Boys, you know we build shit, come on. If it ain't insane as touch, it ain't Bushwick. It's a whole lot of buttons, please never push this. You know how I do this, cause I never get finished. But whenever you start this, you know that I'm in this. Yeah, I'm with Cool Keith, Dr. Oct, real shit, Ghetto Boys, Chucky, you know how we do this. Break an arm and a leg, take a neck and an arm, break a spine from a spleen, let you know that I'm on the right. Mantronics, 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 Cool Keith, Bushwick, Southwest, East shit, Ultra Magnetics, you know, Ghetto Boys, Bill shit, come on, now you know what you're on when this shit's turned on and you can't turn it off and you know that you're lost, but the eye might be the cause for me to Oh, 
I would feel wrong if I wasn't doing nothing. Not to make it. Play my piece and my yeah. get that money, man. Yeah, man. Hey. What's your number? You know? Yeah, two from that golden age of hip hop and when and he was a big part of kicking Houston's door right into that golden age which led to a young sir yes sir what's up brother hold up yes sir wait where's that you gotta get right on the mic man yeah 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 man coming from Houston tell me I wanna say cause you came up around DJ Screw yes sir and I love DJ Screw. DJ Screw is one of the most important people to have in ever in Houston. DJ Screw took Houston to a whole nother level. But true, one of the problems with not with Screw at all, not not blaming him at all, not because he supported everybody, but with the average person's mind state, man, and what 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 goes on now. I love to see all the love still for DJ Screw, but I think sometimes the the, the newer generation doesn't understand that. There was stuff before him, man. Like, the Ghetto Boys are the ones who really started this, and the Ghetto Boys are the international superstars of rap that made Houston what it is. True. DJ Screw took it to the next level, please. Of course. DJ Screw brought us a sound. DJ Screw is very important to us, and may he rest in peace. Amen. As a child growing up, what did the Ghetto Boys mean to you? Man, honestly, man, Ghetto Boys met... Gangster rap, uh, being real, uh, no backing down. Yes. You know, that's what I, you know, that was like a, when the Ghetto Boys came on, that was like the, the gangster, when the, that's when, that's the, that was our gangster music. You know, when it, when it's, took, when the, in the club, when they get to the acting stupid, you know, like now they got that, that, you know, when they get to the bumping and knocking each other all around when certain songs come on. That was that was the ghetto boys for me back then, and for the you know the, the dudes of my era and the older ones. You know, you mess around when that come on. You know, hey man, the club gets shut down. Yep. You know, people wanna you know regulate, mess oh, around. The club, and, the club would get shut down big time. The parking lot, a lady might get slapped down for <laughs> talking fly. You know, brothers might start fighting. You know, just it, that's when it just got real. It just get real. You know, when you say ghetto boys, that all that music come on. I mean, not just Southside. It was a whole H time, you know. You know, it made it. It let them know, like, hey, Houston, I ain't about the cows and horses. <laughs> man, I, I promise you, man, I couldn't tell you, but I got an older brother, so you know, I come in on the bald head women, you know, that <laughs> Willie D, that era, you know. You know what you years ago, yeah, yeah, there you go. What you see, D? What, 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 what? You know, and I yeah. wasn't supposed to be listening to that type of music, but yeah. hey, big bro had it on, and hey, man, I was rocking to it, you know. But man, it was just, it was just real, you know. I ain't no faking. Did, did, did that, did that kind of um got you into um on a rap at the time or what? Man, big, big part, a big part. Scarface was a big motivation to me, you know. Scarface, Willie D. You know, the whole era, you know, they whole little Houston, you know, Houston path that they laid down, you know, was a big motivation to let me know, hey, you can do it. So from there, from, I think, uh, they knocked the doors down, then you knocked the pictures out the wall. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's, that's right. Up. That's right. <laughs> no, that's for real, man. That's for real. And I'm so glad you came down tonight because uh, I think sometimes, not we in this room, but we as a collective in Houston forget where a lot of these things came from, man. Yeah. We've had different eras and different come-ups, different things happen here, and the reality is Kate Reno yeah. Yeah. and the and Ghetto Boys. The original Ghetto Boys on to Scarface, Bushwick, and Willie D. Those were the ones 
that really knocked it down. We got of course Def Four, of course, you know, Raheem. Yeah, yeah, of course yeah. the early guys, but really the ghetto boys. When was yeah. it what too much trouble? Too much trouble, of course. When you first heard Bushwick Bill, do you remember your first experience? Or have you had any interesting experiences and, and interactions with Bushwick man. Bill? Oh man. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Mm. Uh yeah, man, I done had some good and some crazy ones. <laughs> and you know, I think that's going to be a reoccurring theme for the night. Yeah, yeah, you know, Butch was always real, though, you know. Yeah. Um, he was always, always real. real. He going to say what's on his mind, whether he want to hear it or not. Yep. I'm going to tell you all some, uh, I was, I want to say about 10, 11, 12, I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't a teen. I wasn't a teen at all. But uh, one of my cousins, she come home. Mad and cussing, talking about uh, this dude had slapped on the butt, you know, downtown. You know, this little, this little short guy with a, a, a had a, a gold cane, and you know, her brother was hot. He's like, What happened? Ooh. And she, well, when he smacked on the butt, she turned around and you know, and swung. And uh, Bill had some bodyguards with him. I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know if one or two, but I know they grabbed her like, hey, you don't know who this is? You know, and she was like, I don't care. He slapped me on my butt, you know. <laughs> and um, so they hold her back, you know. And Bill was mad because she kicked his cane off from under him. He was trying to get at her. She trying to get at him, you know. And uh, later on, come kind to of find out it was Bushwick, Man. you know. Imagine that. Yeah, I say, man, God, dog. Then met him, got a little older. And I told him about it, and he was like, oh, man, that happened a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, downtown bus, woo, 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 uh, female, you had slapped that with my cut. He's like, man, I slapped, man, did she have a big ass? <laughs> I say, man, this dude, he is wild. No, you know what's, you know what's one thing about Bushwick, though? Yeah, he's a ladies' man. Not just that, his memory. He remember. I guarantee he remembered that moment. Yeah, yeah. He remembered everything, and he could tell you every detail. Yeah, he oh, ain't man. denied. He say, man, that happened a lot of times. <laughs> man. Where she at? He say, where she at? <laughs> say, man, this man here's for real. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. He's a real ghetto boy. <laughs> pop up. Well, young star, do you understand who is sitting across from you at that table right now? You know who that is, Daddy O. From the legendary Stetsasonic, man. Wow, wow. You know, very familiar with the name, man. You yeah. know, I was a little pup. Yeah. You know. You talk about kicking down doors, kicking down international doors, kicking down the sound doors. That's right. That's Daddy right. O. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for coming out tonight to represent the Oh, anytime, bro. Anytime. What are you doing in Houston? I live here. You live in Houston, bro. Yeah, right. I follow. I follow my favorite rappers to Houston. Man. So, so in in the nineties, I stopped listening to New York hip hop because everybody was lying, and I knew everybody that was hustling, and they started talking about selling dope and going out of town. I'm like him? Are you serious? Yeah. And so when once I heard Pocket Full of Stones, I found my favorite rappers. Oh man, wow. okay. that's huge. Real? Wow. So, well, you made the transition to, to Houston. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I. You know, it's family stuff, too. Right, right, right. I, I, My grandson was coming. It's the daughter that said she would never get married or have a child, and she did both. Yeah, man. So now I got two grandsons born in Houston. Well, I'll tell you one thing. So, so, so I'm glad I ain't in New York so we could go hunting and all that. Yeah, right. Yeah. One thing I know about Stetsasonic was when I first went to Europe, all the people that I was meeting that were into hip-hop, if I talked to them about, you know, they would say, you were you were definitely like the first concert they saw. You were you guys knocked down the door and going overseas and taking this music. And spreading yeah, we we for the original hip hop. Our band. first hey. tour, our first tour was overseas. Like, I always, it ain't really a comparison, but I always compare us to the Beatles because right. I read something about the Beatles and how they went before they performed around London. They went to Wales and they worked out all the kinks. Yeah, so by the time, that, yeah. by the time they came to London, they was tight. So it was the same thing with us. Like. We went overseas first. So by the time we did shows in America, it was mad easy. Right. Because we used to go overseas and have to hold down an hour and a half. Man, no, that's real. That's this is, real. We came, to, we came to America, toured with LL, and we had 20 minutes. Right. 
He's like, we kill this 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all what is that? Over there, then come, get, yeah. then come to your hometown. You got to get 20 minutes. Yeah. Hey, so. man, not to cut y'all off, man. Sally Walk. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, I think I was doing the kid and play when that came on. Some, Some people, people don't. Like hey, people. hey, I was all in the ah. Sally for real. My mama, hey man, hey hey, for real man. Well, I don't, was kid and play I did. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was out. Yeah, yeah, I know I was doing some dance when they came on. <laughs> you know, yeah, man. got dog right. Yes, legend, sir. legend, hey, legend. Man, let's let's transition that into Bushwick Bill started out as a dancer. Oh yeah, yeah. Bushwick Bill yeah. started out break dancing. I saw I saw, I saw some of the videos. Yeah, Bill like, wow. Bill was one of the few people in hip hop that encompassed all of the elements mm-hmm. like most of us don't have that like me i'm not i could right. dj a little bit i ain't no real dj yeah, paul right. is a dj right. i'm i'm just a rapper you know what i mean like i can't dance i can't do graffiti but bushwick very interestingly he could do all of them yep so it was it was crazy real hip-hop now i'm gonna assume because i know Everybody, when they came to Houston back in the day, touched down at the Rhinestone Wrangler. And I'm going to assume Stetson Sonic touched down at the Rhinestone absolutely. Wrangler at some point Captain in time. Captain Jack. Yep, absolutely. Do you remember that? You remember I do. those days? I do. I, mean, I, remember, I remember the first time we came to Houston. And so I had New Bushwick from New York. Mm-hmm. and um, You already knew him from New York? Yeah. And, uh, oh. yeah, we got, I, I got a, it's X-rated, but <laughs> it was dope, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, wow. <laughs> it was dope though. Man, but you were he he opened some doors for me. Put it down. Straight up. Really? Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, some cinnamon doors. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I know. You know, one of the things Steve Fournier was talking about with the battles at the Rhinestone Wrangler back in the day. Yeah. Right. He was talking about how before gangster rap was a thing. I mean, there was always these themes within within rap music, but. A lot of the West Coast artists and people who came down and saw how hard-edged and, and heavy the battles were at the Rhinestone Wrangler at the time, he feels, he was saying that he feels that Houston had a bigger influence than it gets credit for in the formation of what became Gangster Rap. Not only that, not only that, but just style and format. Like, all the guys from Houston, like, you know, because I know Big Mike, of right. course I know Scarface, Bill. Those guys were were adamant in keeping a certain structure. That's why those records ended up being classics. And that's no disrespect to some of the other guys from Houston, but you see a lot of those records becoming classics because they were adamant about keeping the structure. They just had their own style. Exactly. You know, and that's what made me feel... I fell in love with Houston. I fell in love with the Bay. Yep. And what made me fall in love with them was that it... it I was always thinking, man, rap is just not going to be us. It's just not going to be us. And I was so happy, no disrespect to Miami, but to see somebody besides Miami rapping because the guys in Miami was into that fast stuff and all. You know, so it felt a little different. Right. But then when the guys from Houston and the guys from the Bay started doing it, it felt like hip-hop, but it was it was soundtracking. And that's what I had missed in New York. Like, New York stopped talking about where they was from and all Everything was about something else, and then they start lying about dope. I'm like, yo, man. man, you know what I'm saying? But then when you listen to the Houston guys, they was always talking about where they was from, where they came up, the streets, yeah. and that's hip hop. Mm-hmm. Like if you listen to old Flash tapes, if you listen to old Fantastic tapes, yeah. that's what you'll hear. Yeah. And so they kept that structure, and that's what, that's what you know who who really learned from that rhinestone wrangler. I don't know if Steve told you this. Hammer used to come and just stand there Man. all the time Are you serious? and study. Yeah, Man. I remember. T- I'm talking about not performing, nothing. Just come there, study, listen to cats rap. MC Hammer. Yep. Damn, that's crazy. I think a lot of people were coming down here. At that I mean, people like me. You wouldn't think about De La Soul performing at the Rhinestone Wrangler, but they yeah. did. Yep. Oh yeah. Like that Steve, was the Steve, but Steve everything. brought us. Steve brought us on. Then you know. So Daylight was Tommy Boy, and we was Tommy Boy, and yep. Steve had a great relationship with the label. So everybody the from Tommy Boy, you know, us, Digital Underground, Latifa, Naughty, you know, all of us. You know, Steve had all of us, so yeah. Yeah, we had a great time. Jesus. Yeah, he had all 
relax. He had all the cool jackets. When I first met Steve, he had all the cool jackets and everything, all the cool little patches and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, those. Were you around the Rhinestone Wrangler? Yeah. Yeah, I was too young. Oh, now I'm young, too. Yeah, I had a, I, I had a, uh, I was, I had, I had first started, I was DJing at this little game room in South Park. Yeah. It was um, owned by a police officer. His name was um, Officer Jefferson. And he was one of the cops that used to um, work those clubs. So when I, when, um, when I wanted, he, he took me there one night to meet Wicked Cricket there and to um, check out how the club was because, like, I, I was new, I was fresh, you know what I mean? I was, like, around 15, you 16 years old. You were 15, 16. Yeah. Rhinestone Wrangler, even yeah. though, even old as you are, <laughs> you, were, you were 15, 16. Yeah, back I was 15, 16 years old, real. yeah. So he wanted, I, he wanted me to introduce you because I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't, I could DJ, but I, I wasn't MCing. So he wanted to in, in, introduce me to some MCs or how they talked in the club. So he took me to up there to the club. I met MC Wicked Cricket and, and um, Foyer and all those guys. So, yeah, man. man. Wow. Cricket. Well, daddy we really appreciate you coming down tonight. Oh, no and, doubt, and, man. And spread, sharing some love for uh, Bushwick Bill. Honestly, if, um, I hate to say it, but. We, we got some Houston legends coming in tonight. Youngsters already here, of course. I think Big Mike's on his way. We got DJ Styles in the house. We got yeah, all kinds. We got more people coming in. We got Premier about to call in. Premier's about to call in. But uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate Cool Keep a lot for calling in because I want people to understand. Because we in Houston, we we do end up in a, we end up in a little bubble here. We Houston yeah. rappers is, is in a bit of a bubble sometimes, man. I want these youths and the people on lock and the people who are listening, because we have a lot of listeners in prison here. I want them to understand that, like, Houston was happening in that golden era of rap. Yeah. Houston I mean, was... He just, he just named all the top uh, uh, rap groups that was out in the in, in, at the beginning right. that he was a part of. And he I mean, he mentioned... I mean, Houston was represented by it's, the Ghetto Boys. You know, the Ghetto Boys... Houston still has a... a a huge influence on hip hop. No, he's had a huge influence on yeah. hip hop, but I think but a I'm lot saying, of people nowadays don't understand that how far back it goes. Yeah. But they don't have no. You know, my biggest problem with that. Yeah. Like I had to search for everything because there was no YouTube, yeah. there was no nah. internet. Like they don't have any excuse for not knowing. No. You know what I mean? So if they don't know, I almost feel like they don't want to know. Look, I'm you know what I'm at, saying? I'm not mad at a kid who doesn't know everything. They don't have to know everything. But, okay, but you I could you could be myself, the one you could be but, the one not no, but, not mad. I'm, no, I'm mad. Myself, no, no, I'm mad. I think about myself. If I was a kid, yeah, I I think about sometimes when I look at my kids who aren't going outside as much as we did and all yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, if I was a kid and I had every record in my pocket and if I had every video and like, cause I used to trade video cassettes of concerts. <laughs> I, I used to trade in the mail cassettes and video cassettes of live concerts and and battle tapes. And things like that. And I'd wait yep. six weeks for somebody who may or may not actually send me my trade, my tape. Yep. And I would obsess over that stuff. Could you imagine if, if I was 15 years old, 14 years old right now, I could hit a button and listen to a Cold Crush battle? Yeah, I'd, it'd be I'd, crazy. I'd, I'd and you can. Yeah, you can. That's that's what I'm saying. I don't so I don't get them tape, passes. They don't, they don't know. I just don't. I don't give them passes. Like, yeah. I used to, the guys before these guys, I give passes. Yeah. But even some of those guys, I don't give passes because they could do the same thing now, too. So you could play catch up. All right, kids, just so you know, you have every record and every battle tape in your pocket right now. You got the whole history in your pocket. So, but, bad. I told a young DJ this week, I said, man, um, they, they do have it easy because they can do the, they can do the research with a, with a touch of the button. Yeah. I had to look yeah. at DJ Times Magazine, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, <laughs> to research uh, other DJs from other places to, to to have that goal to reach. So yeah, that, it is important to um, to get the history of where you want to go. Absolutely. And, yeah. So there it is. Well, thank you so much for coming down. Man. Oh no doubt, man. Anytime, whatever you need, man. I'm here. Sunny. Hey, we're gonna take a musical break here and play a couple of Ghetto Boys classics. For those that don't know how many records you did and the records that you that you are known for, let uh, give give them a rundown on. It. I'll just tell you one top billing. The rest is man, yeah. man, come on. Man, man. top. Wow, the rest of that. it's a bunch, but yeah. top them. Yeah. I got daylight at deal too, cause what? Paul ain't know. Yeah, cause Paul ain't know what to do with them. Yeah, Foxy man. started in my basement. Lil Kim started in my basement. Man, MC, get it. Man, the 
Well, yeah, I'm old yeah. now, so it is a Netflix series. So I'm old now. Didn't screw, didn't screw, screw did that on what? That's on one of them. Oh, screw at the donkey with it, man. I love school, man. Oh man. Yeah. What more can I say? <laughs> Top, that's what. Uh, man. Hey, I'm running red lights. <laughs> pulling, all that. Pulling all that. Driving with my knee oh, yeah, trying to know, roll. Another, and, thing, hey. another thing about Houston before I go, you know, we gave Lil O his deal. That's my man. man. Lil O, my, my. Like I always say, we the first people to put. Beyonce and them on video because if you look in the Can't Stop video, you yeah. see Destiny's that's Child right. in there that's right. that's hitting the roof. Wow. That's right. So we we gave little O we gave little O his deal too. Man. Fat that's Red. my little man. Fat Red, Fat Red. with the cheese. <laughs> Big up to my brother Ivy for bringing you down tonight. Oh yeah, I really appreciate you, Daddy. Yo. Absolutely, a lot. Like I said, put Bushwick Bill right up there. Understand that he is up there in Absolutely. the upper echelons of rap, yeah. classic hip hop. Hip hop culture, not just rap music. Hip hop culture. This man deserves his flowers. We gave him, you know, he got flowers while he was alive. Yeah, but we, but I, I wish, you know, and I, I hate to say this, I hate to even say it like this, but when Saturday, like I wanted to do this before, I wanted him to hear this. Yeah, and yeah. Saturday, when they had said he had he had passed, but then his family came out and said he hadn't passed yet. I was praying so hard, man, like please, because I wanted to do this show tonight. So he could hear it, man. I know he's hearing it where he is now. He deserves to hear this. He deserves yeah. to get those flowers. If, he, if anyone does, like, this is a dude. Absolutely. This is a pioneer of this music. And like I said, without Bushwick Bill, where would we be? Let's get into a couple Ghetto Boys classics. Daddy O, Young Side, si, definitely appreciate y'all coming down. We got more people coming. Yes, sir. For sure. We got for two sure. more hours, and, and who knows? We may have to go longer. I don't know. I don't know, man. A couple Ghetto Boys classics right now. If you want to call in 713 526 5738, if you got some uh, memories of Bushwick Bill, we'd love for you to share them. We got uh, lots of folks out there. I'm going to go see who's out there in the uh, lobby right now. And uh, we'll be right back after a couple songs. We're gonna, I think DJ Premier is calling in. We got a few more surprise callers, and we'll see. Uh, I'm hoping Big Mike makes it to the studio tonight. DJ Styles is in the house, another Houston hip hop pioneer. We're going to talk to him. And it's really going down. Yeah, we have to talk about the whole history of sound waves. All right. <laughs> it's damage control. The little big man. Oh, yeah. We'll connect. I, I swear, I'll finna ask you for your dude, dude. I was right there with you. Oh, were you? I got <laughs> pictures of you at the Rhinestone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what's up. You got to send them to me. Matter of fact, send them to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, is he, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's my email and, uh, and, my, and my number. I'll send this to Premier, too. Oh, okay, cool. Because, you know, we worked this. We used to. Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're gonna connect again. Okay. If yeah. you live here, I'm Premier here. comes here. You know his family lives out here. Yeah, so. yeah, I know that. So yeah, yeah, just yeah. I'm I'm about to hit, I'm I'm about to hit him up anyway. Okay. Cause I I, I need to bother him about. Yeah. No doubt. All right, man. Yes, sir. What's your name? Carlos. Carlos nice yeah, I do production with uh, Devin the Dude okay, and Blind Rob. Yeah. Good man. Yeah. Good man. 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 Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. No problem. No, you know what? I don't think you I know I've seen you out that's why you never seen me with a partner in crime. I'm down and dirty, Nick. Don't fuck with the work. And that's what separates the ghetto boys from the dirt. I'm not even going to be here. I'm not even going to be here. I'm not even going to be here. I'm that's not him? Oh, 
I got his number. If you ain't get the card, that yo number. I got this. Yeah. Okay, okay, for sure. Two somebody's gonna take it or we're gonna take it. Okay, I like it. Okay. Yeah, like my two thousand. Okay. Oh, yeah, let me get that. Let me do my good side. You better let the motherfuckers hang. Even if you're facing 20 years, you never rat. Yeah. Okay. Tell me if you don't agree. That's good. Mm-hmm. Till next time, be blessed, baby. Okay. Follow. Okay, okay. I'm about to get some, some cards. There you go. <laughs> Breaking the stuff already. Breaking shit. I'm not used to this. I'm behind the scenes kind of person. <laughs> I'll record you and mix and master your music. All right. Well, if I'm doing music, you need a lot of auto shooting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody's using it. You'd be surprised who uses it. Yeah, someone asked me to come to the studio the other day, and I was like, for what? And yeah, like, it, it, I don't know. You want to you wanna sing or something? I was yeah. like, you got auto tune? Hey man, anybody can see. As long as you're close to the key, man, you, you're good. Yeah. I think I have a... Talk to the people he influenced, the people who came up around him, and what's incredible is I'm about to faint right now, Jill. Yeah, why is that? Pull up our next caller, please. Number two. It's number two. Yo, come here. Come here. Yo. Come on, man. Cool Daddy-o. DJ Premier. <laughs> These are the people who are calling in representing for Bushwick Bill. Wow. Can you go yeah, much deeper? Man. Thank you for yeah. calling in. For real, Premier, for real. This means a lot to all of us here. A lot of people don't associate Houston with that real golden era of hip hop, that real beginnings of when it really broke through and what really happened. Yeah, definitely. And then plus one, uh, rest in peace to uh, DJ Ready Red. One mm. Um, started to bring the East Coast sound because he was from the East Coast. Exactly. To the, to the Ghetto Boys, the thing that was dope was the Ghetto Boys stayed true to the hot style of how they rap, even though the beat had a little taste of a, a, a of an East Coast uh, t- type of an original sound. Right. Uh, mix, mixed with the way, you know, the South starting to bring their sound and it mixed together. So uh, they still stayed in their lane of how they spit, and that's why everything came out, you know, you know, perfect every time. When you had, even when they changed the uh, personnel with with OG Big Mike and yeah. and even before Face, 
and Willie, you know, and, and Bushwick, all, all the ghetto boys uh, have constantly gone into an upward swing from the very beginning of the, of the entire, you know, existence and stuff. So it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, man, gonna miss Bill, man. It's Chucky, man. Yeah, man. Chuckwick, well, man. Chuckwick. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, it's crazy because I'm, I'm listening to Grip It on that other level. You know. Mm. I stayed listening that, um, to that. The, 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 the original one, the, you know, the, the original rap, a lot of independent one before it was re-released. Right. You know. Wow. Or loving this shit. No, but I like, actually, yeah, that Gripping on Another Level is one of those albums that I remember when I went and bought the tape. Like, I remember picking up the tape in what the did, shop. What did, what did you get the, where did you get the tape from? Man, of course Soundwave's on what? South Main, man. Right. What? Where else I'm going to go, man? There you go. I lived on Holly Hall. I lived on the other, yeah. Yeah. I lived right on the other side of the Astrodome. I lived right on the other side of the Astrodome. And Soundwave's on South Main got yeah. Yeah. 30 yeah, to 70% of my paycheck every week. I, I, I got to shout out Carlos Garza, man. TJ he's the one that He's the one that, that got me the job and, and uh, believed in me. And he just has always been, you know, just my number one pushing me from day one man you know? i would like to talk about that a little bit because to be real with you that has not been discussed in enough detail because dj styles carlos garza right here i'm looking at him right through this window Sorry, carlos, you the long Car- tail. carlos <laughs> no he brought me so much we used to do a show here we started in like the end of 91 and went to 94 it's called strictly hip-hop sundays and we, when they first put us on here at kpft we were on Sunday night, Monday morning, from 3 a.m. to 5:30 a.m. Wow! Yeah. They later, That's it's crazy. fairly soon, like months in, months in. It wasn't even that long. They made us midnight to 5:30. Okay, okay. They but that was it. still Sunday night, Monday morning. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much the worst time possible for anything. Yeah. Besides but, sleeping. But you was, but you was and, able to. But do no, something. Carlos was coming down. With, I met. I mean, every but the Odd Squad was just forming and just just demoing and man, getting their stuff together for the. Uh, and Devin. Yeah, and, and come, uh, you know, yeah, man. my youth, my when I first came to Houston, my entry into Houston was when I f- was finding the record stores, finding me, and Sound Exchange on South Main was like Mecca. Sound Waves. Sorry, no, Sound Exchange on West Tower, but Sound Waves <laughs> on uh, South yeah. Main was yeah. Mecca. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Carlos, what for you? You are very much appreciated. Amen. Yes, indeed. Yeah. We used, to, we used to go to one on Broadway, but go ahead. <laughs> South Main ran everywhere. Same one. <laughs> Same one. I'm, I'm, what's up, Brim? Yeah, yeah. What up, what up, Carlos? DJ Styles. <laughs> DJ Styles in the house. Yeah, what's up, DJ Styles? <laughs> Tell me about those days, man. I mean, I'm going to assume there were some times when y'all were working at Soundwaves Records that Bushwick Bill came walking in that door and maybe caused a ruckus. Not, called, not a bad ruckus, but came in and made his presence known. Did you have any memories of those days? No, nah, I didn't get those memories. But no? the thing is, no, nah, I, I didn't get any OD, the, uh, you know, Biz Marquee moments. No. <laughs> you know, like, like the Bushwick Bill, uh, it, it, he's such a one of a kind. Yeah. Uh, for, you know, bug out flanks. I loved, I even loved him when he was on Martin, man. That was, that was a good oh, yeah. man. He was on a couple of them, but he was actually... Uh, just so funny the way they they was gonna fight Tommy, you know. But uh, yeah, man. I mean, he he had a dope voice. I'm really into voices. He mm-hmm. had a, 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 a just an overall package along with just the way he delivered rhymes, you know. So right. I, 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 I like I said, I, I'm I'm enjoying hearing his voice yeah, to you know just keep me on the good times of how dope he did his thing in his career. And the music can never disappear. Yeah, you know, it's gonna always exist. So. You still exist 24 7. We miss you. But uh, the music keeps you here, you know? Forever. Yeah. Hey, Prem. Yo. You remember when we first saw him, though? You remember, right? Nah, bro. Yeah, you were. Okay. So, you know, he, he used to dance for the Ghetto Boys. Right. And we used to go right across the street to the Rhin. Was it the Rhinestone Wrangler? Wrangler. Yeah. Wrangler? The original one. And I think we caught a couple of shows oh, early. Bro. Yeah. Cause he used to dance wow. up there on that stage. I mean, I remember Willie D battling before he yeah, was. Yeah, when, when, when he had my my MC top beatbox form. Right, wow. right. Yeah. So wow. yeah, and and so like I said, when I first heard that that what was the song? Do it like a Geo. Yeah. I didn't uh, even know that was him because I knew him as a dancer. Mm-hmm. 
So I had no idea until later on that it was even him. Wow. There's a clip on, on the gram now with, with him saying, you know, right uh, break dancing. Yeah. yeah. So I knew he danced. I didn't I didn't realize he was a b-boy, though. I was like, whoa. Yeah. That yeah. blew my yeah. mind. So y'all actually yeah. just leave the, the, the record store and go straight across the way? Yeah, it was club. right across the street. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I wish I wish we all could go okay. back to those days. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know if you guys ever went to the clubs, man, to that, to that rhinestone ranger. Yeah. Because remember, that was like one of the first hip, only right, hip hop uh, uh, clubs, yeah. uh, uh, all night, full hip hop, yeah. every yeah, day but, uh, of the week. Hey, yo, Steve Fanye, Ca Captain on, Jack. On, on that note, I got to shout out my mentor who taught me how to oh, scratch. Oh, of course. R RP Cole. What? Yeah, right. What? Yeah, he, that's who taught me how to scratch. Are you right? serious? RP. At Prairie View, at PV. And, uh, and, and, uh, and that's my peoples. And... Uh, he used to be there at the Rhinestone Wrangler. He would yeah. tear it down. He would tear it down. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah, he nasty with it. Didn't, what, I, think Lon, I think Lonnie Mack played there before, too. Yes. Oh, he man. did. Yeah. Wow. RP Lonnie Cole. Mack, to be honest, man, Primo, for real, when you when you made that statement right at the beginning of, that, of Scratch the Movie, that was a huge moment for Houston, to my in my opinion, because you really exposed some extreme real history in a film that nobody nobody would think of that mm. nobody would think of that and you said it real. you said it straight up right that i remember that was one of the opening scenes of that film and you talked about rp cola Man. and yeah. i love the fact that you have always looked back and given back acknowledge yeah. tell me how did y'all meet how did uh dj styles and dj premiere meet um <laughs> i was doing the wrong thing i was i didn't have a lot of money to buy all the 12 inches that i wanted and they had everything everything i wanted even from the east coast that were only independent records that you know it's like they probably won't even make it out to houston and, and he had it on the wall it's like yo damn he got everything and, and i couldn't afford the, what was on the price to get y'all you know i want to get like five or six instead of just walking out with one yeah and uh so we the price tags that they had back then were easy to peel off. So I would peel off <laughs> and like maybe put a dollar ninety nine on it. Ah! He sees he sees me doing it. Oh, but, I'm, man. I'm, but, but I'm but I'm but I'm let him do it on purpose so I can yeah, catch him. He sees me doing it. But ah. I'm but, I'm, I, but even when, when I'm looking at him, I'm like, yeah, I know he ain't gonna say nothing to me. And then when I get to the counter. He goes, yo, man, those prices are wrong. Cause he like grabs and said, let me ring them up. I'm like, oh, look at, you know, at the point, I'm like, look at this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and and he, was a, he was a little skinnier and then. Like, yeah, a lot oh, skinnier. Yeah, and shorter. And, and, uh, and, he, yeah, and he could break dance. And, and yep. he, he could, yeah, he could spin. And, uh, and then uh, he, I'm like, nah, man, whatever's on the prices is what I'm paying. He said, no, I'm the one that priced me and put them on the wall, those prices are wrong. I'm like, you can't do it. You can't prove it or whatever. So uh, we didn't hit it off. I still bought, I just bought the shit. And then when I came the next time in the store, now it was kind of like, yeah, yeah I know, uh, you'll give me a problem this time since I was acting up with changing your prices. And then we started talking in some type of way about we just, music. We hip -hop. just, yeah, hip hop, we man. It was hip hop yeah. that, that kind of put yeah. us together. Yeah, yeah. And, you we, know. and then we got mad cool and then, I was like, man, I'd like to work here. And he was like, yo, let me talk to the boss. The boss hired me. Oh, Very man. I miss some days, man. How long, how, long, how, long, how, long did you, how long did you work over there? Uh, for what? Two years? Three, oh, three, three, four years, something like that? Wow. Yeah. Oh, man. Those now, were the days. Now, Those were the days. Golden age when of hip-hop, man. When did you leave Houston, and how did you get with Guru? May he also rest in peace. Another legend we've lost. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, uh... I left in late 87, going into 88. Yep. And uh, he heard my demo tape that I made. Carlos had already told the owner of the label about me. And Man. He, told him I was, he told him I was coming to New York. That wild pitch? Um, wild yeah, pitch record? He, he told him I was coming for the summer. And they we linked up. He said, yeah, hit me up when you get here. Once we linked up, um, Guru heard my demo. was like, yo, man, I want you to be in the group. But I was in another group that was uh, that went to PV with me. And yeah. so, what uh, was that group? What was that but, group? But, uh, that, that was called, first we were called MCs in Control. Man. It was me, Topsky, uh, who's one of the MCs, and Sugar Pop, David Ever, Sugar Pop from Oak Cliff. And, uh, yeah. and so it was, uh, we had like a, like a Flavor Flay type named Styly T. Uh, and he's from Oak Cliff. He's, I think he's from Sock. But, 
man, we had a fun time being that group. And when it came to moving to New York, everybody couldn't really come. And, you know, I, I went full throttle to get the music going. And it just, you know, narrowed down to them wanting me. But when my main MC, Top, didn't uh, want, want to really stay to keep seeing if we could get a chance to finally get signed together, he went ahead and enlisted in the, in the military. So when he did that, he told me he enlisted for four years. So that's when I reached back out to Wild Pitch and told him, yo, um, I really want to uh, work with Guru. And he said, all right, let us see if we can go in the studio. And I Manifest was the first record we Man. did. And, 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 it, and it, t- it took off. So there they were like, yo, I went home for Thanksgiving, back to go back to TV, to school. And then they were like, yo, we got to shoot a video, but we want to remix it, make it a little more, you know, energetic. So I went back, remixed it. We did the video to that version, and everything actually went uphill from there. You know, there's going to always be down, too, so, but overall, it was a great uphill. So let's be very clear here. A man named Carlos Garza from Houston, Texas, had and a RP big Cola part. Too, had, and RP Cola. Cola had a big part in getting Guru and Premier together. Yeah, no doubt. 100%. Also, man. I want to take a second here while you're, while you're on the phone. I want to say uh, rest in peace to my sister, DJ Steph, as well. And she hey, was, Steph. Man, oh, Steph, do you know Steph and Serge got together at the Scribble Jam they met, and when she told him she had a friend who did a, me, who did a show in Houston, who played a lot of Southern rap because he liked a lot of Southern rap at that time. And before they actually got together together, they used to chat online on AIM, <laughs> yeah, we used, to, we used to have AIM popping down here at Damage Control, man. They used to chat online to AIM during oh, wow. Damage Control. So shout out to my brother Serge and rest in peace to my sister, one of the greatest people, my favorite DJ actually. Yeah, yeah. DJ Steph. Yeah, Steph is a sweetheart, man. God bless her. We've known each other since like '90. God bless DJ Steph. I miss yeah, her man. so much, man, for real. And she always big. She loved you, loved Guru, loved yeah, yeah. real, real, Steph real hip hop, man. Bless, God bless her soul. Word. Real, but Bushwick Bill, man, this show tonight is a tribute to very literally one of the people who put Houston on the map. The Ghetto Boys put Houston on the map, but like I said early in the show, Public Enemy was incredible. But without Flavor Flav bringing that element to the group, I don't think the average person could have fully grasped Public Enemy and what Chuck D was saying and what Chuck D was doing. Yeah. He, that balance between Chuck D and Flavor Flav is what made public enemy the force that they became that oh, balance yeah. between a scarface and willie d and bushwick bill bushwick bill's just natural aura yeah 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 part of a kind. is part yeah. one of a kind only there's no other bushwick bill there's no other that that's one thing we were talking about i was talking scarface. about this when like the nwa movie came out and some things like that i was like man you know what it'd be really hard to do a ghetto boys movie because Nobody could totally en- en- encompass or encapsulate any of them. Mm-hmm. You can't really bite Willie D. Not at all. You can't become. You can try. Yeah. But you can't be Willie D. You can bite a lot of MCs. You can't bite Willie uh-huh. D. You cannot yeah, be Scarface. Really yeah, you you cannot be Scarface. Scarface is Scarface, yeah. and you for sure. Yeah, you you, you cannot him. be Bushwick you Bill. Cannot. You can't bite Bushwick Bill and be Bushwick Bill. They mm-hmm. were so one of a kind. No doubt. Yeah, yeah, he, he broke the mold with them. Yeah, you yep. come over with them. So once again, man, man, we certainly appreciate you calling in because you are a big part and a, a big piece of this Houston hip hop history, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate y'all. And, and hip um, hip hop you know, in Carlos, general. And it, Carlos, me, yes, thank sir. You, and and th- thank you for everything. You know, being a part of getting me to where I'm at. And same thing uh, with RP Cola and uh, KPFC. I appreciate y'all. Ninety point one. Yeah. Signing out. Peace and love. I'm going to bed. Yes, sir. <laughs> and sure. Thank you, you, you so much. Good night. Uh, all right. Peace and love. All right, man. All right. I'll talk to you later. Wow. That was dope. Should we get into a little more music and, yeah, yeah. and see who else is in the building, see who else is calling yeah, yeah. in? I know we we've got, got some more. we got uh, Texas T. Texas T is in the yeah. house. We've got some more call-ins coming in. We've got... Wow. 90, I got 100 more minutes, actually, of the Damage Control Program, and this is all for Bushwick Bill. We're going to get into a little Ghetto Boys Bushwick Bill mix here, and uh, you can call us, too, 713-526-5738. If anybody in Austin, actually, is listening right now who has a story, I would love to hear from someone, you know, like Domico's from Future Blondes. I want to end the show. Domico's from Future Blondes, who you may have never heard of, he makes some wild-ass electronic music. <laughs> 
he did a song with Bushwick that I think is going to be the perfect wow. song to end with because I, you'll hear it when you hear it and you'll understand what I'm talking about. That's cool. But if anybody out there has got some uh, Bushwick Bill memories, stories you want to share, 713-526-5738 is the number. We would love to hear from you. You don't have to be a hip-hop legend from the golden era. You don't have to be all that. But you have to actually have a memory with it. But you him. actually, no, don't call don't in just about call anything in just else. Don't call in. Yeah, Skyla said that. Don't just yes. call in holler. Don't man. call in just to hear your voice. Yeah, shout yeah. out shout out to a, ABP from Eastside, Waco, Texas. Uh, Eastside East Block in Waco, Texas, man. He want to say RIP to uh, Bushwick Bill, man. ABP. Shout Rest in you. peace to all the soldiers we've lost here in Houston. Houston rap, the story of Houston rap is really a tragedy. The story of the Ghetto Boys is really a tragedy. In, and when I say tragedy, I don't mean it. I mean it in the uh, literary sense. If you really sit down and wanted to read and write about what really we've gone through here, man, it's hell. And this latest loss is incredible. Bushwick Bill, we pray for you. We pray for your soul. We pray for your family. All the fans. I know a lot of you are hurting. And like I said... I have a lot of homeboys in Austin. I'm sure listening on the internet at kpft.org. You can call us right now, 713-526-5738. Homegirls as well. Yeah, yeah. Let us know, man. I want to know. Shout out to Back- Baxter Russell. He says, um... That's MC Fatal, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for real? That's, That's Fatal. OG Fatal from Austin, oh, Texas. Hey, for real. Up, man? He said RIP to, um... Uh, Bushwick Bill, man. Rest easy. OG Fatal has sat in this studio yeah, yeah. more than once. Exactly. One of the few Austin rappers back in the day of Damage Control who would make that trek out here to promote his yeah. music and bring, I mean, bring it here. I, I can see one Bush of the Bill best. walking through the door right now and just no. going straight through. Do you remember? Do you remember when Bushwick <laughs> Bill and Damo came down together? And Bushwick Bill came in. He was standing right there where Carlos was standing, right by that door. He came in and like announced himself. Like I don't remember exactly what he said. He was like, "Hello!" Oh! And he had a cane. And he pulled a sword out of the cane and had it up in there. And I was like, oh, Bushwick Bill's in the house with a sword. <laughs> and he's like, no, no. He started going off, talking, talking, yeah. talking, talking, talking. He's got the sword in the yes. air. And he stayed through the damn near, I think, the whole show. He stayed for the whole show. Yes, yes. Just and talked with and other artists and, and everything. And right? had fun. Like, it was no problem. Yes. Um, when he did his Christian hip hop, he used to come up here and had fantastic shows. So he, he was actually, uh, man, one of those guys that, that didn't care. They would just come up here and hang out and um, debut Unlike music. Unlike some other members of the... All right. <coughs> all right, all right. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, you get to leave. Yeah. <laughs> they can call, hey, they got my phone numbers. They, got, they mad at me. They can come over and talk to me. I don't You're care. a representative da- of damage control tonight. <laughs> I'm not so worried. mind your P's and Q's. I'm not worried about them. I'm not worried about them at all. Anybody who didn't show up... You know what? When the foundation came out, when that foundation album came out in the mid two thousands, and they did a they did a release party, and you and Wiz DJ, not old school Wiz, but DJ the yeah. later DJ Wiz, I had pictures from that show. Some of those pictures ended up in the Source magazine. Mm. I went off on the blog on Houston So Real. I remember because I was like, man, Houston So Real. No, listen, the Ghetto Boys put out a record. And it was right in the middle of the time when all the, 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 the Swisher House guys and all those guys were blown up. Not one of them was in the house. Not one of them came out and supported the Ghetto Boys release. And that is part of the problem here in Houston, Texas. That is part of the problem. And I don't, I'll don't. i leave and they can come to my house. They want to talk to me. They know I'm going to trip out on them. All these artists know I will say it to their face. The history is, not is tainted. Kidding. The history is tainted because of them not respecting the history. This is real, and that has always been my part. That has been your part yep. in this culture in Houston. And yeah, I, will I will call every people. one of them out. I will call every one of them out for not <laughs> respecting this culture. Every rapper in Houston should be here tonight giving it up to Bushwick Bill. Every single one of them should be here, and they are not. But I'm not going to yell all night. No, nah, don't do that. But I'm telling you straight up, I mean it. I mean it from the bottom of my heart you know so crazy? and from my mouth. To all of them, this is real. Bushwick Bill started this. He is one of the people who started this. He was in the Rhinestone Wrangler. He was in these places that that started. paved the, the paved the road for all of us. All of us, me, yeah. you, every rapper in Houston ever. Who came out? Young Star came down here. Yeah. He didn't have to. Where's everybody else? I don't think. Huh? You have, I don't think you have enough passion. Huh? I don't think you have enough passion. 
I have enough. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had less. Yo. And I don't care. I used to get, they used to, Mad Hatter call me out, people call yeah, me out, I'm calling out these people, man. Yeah. I really don't care. They don't like it, call me and talk to me about it. You know what's so crazy? Some like, of the people might be mourning. Some of the people who yeah, are really yeah, there, course, they might they might not be ready to come down and talk yeah, about Bush and Bill, and I definitely. understand that. Some of the people who are have been around and been in that, I understand yeah, that. Man. But there's no reason. This this message went out far and wide. The calls, the texts. I didn't get a lot of response from a lot of these Houston dudes, man. Oh, and I tagged For people, real. so. They didn't even call back Skyler, man. What's wrong with them? Yeah. Girl, they don't They don't have that. They're getting old. They don't have girls texting them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, at least respond to Skyler, dummy. <laughs> no, but for real, every one of you Houston asses who aren't, they're not listening. I'm just yelling it, but hopefully they'll hear the archive. Oh, they, they, every one of them should they, be down here representing for Bushwick Bill. Bushwick <laughs> Bill is the one. He is one of the few people, this many, like this many people in, in the big picture who started this. Yeah. That's why I drove down here. I'm here. I, was, I, was I wish I was here more often. I would love, I love Damage Control. I miss Damage Control. Damage Control is 17 years old. 17 years. It's been on the air for 17 years in the middle of the night on a Wednesday for 17 what? 17 and two weeks. Yeah, for what? 17 and two weeks. Mm -hmm. For what? Because we love this music, we love this culture. Y'all love this music, love this culture. We still do it, we're still live, doing it. Live on the radio. And this is for Bushwick Bill. If Cool Keith and Daddy O from Sets of Sonic and TJ Premier can represent for Bushwick Bill, wow. so can your stupid ass. Anyway, let's play some music. Let's go with it. I'm going to shut up, because, uh, and come down. Want to talk in person? Come down. It's damage control. DA, what up, man? I'm sick of you hoes trying to run Um, that's not a guess. That is a Matt Sanzala. That is the person who started damage control. <laughs> he is our creator. So, um, <laughs> 17 years. Yeah, so that's Matt. <laughs> I'm gonna go share. Hey, how you hey doing? good, how are you? Just so you know, my lives are on. I mean, no, you can go in. No, I just wanted you to know, just, yeah, my lives are on, just so that you, just out of respect. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Joe Limpin. So, how y'all feel? How you feel? How you feel? How you feel, how you feel uh, young man? Yeah, yes, fantastic. always. I'm here. Even my best friends. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, like, like, among the living. Yeah. Yeah, I read, we seen the view. I'm going to be chopping up with your whole too, man. Hey, stop. Feel your fantastic ideas. What's going to go down? I got one that's overly fantastic now. Overly, overly fantastic? So, man, so the, the wreck, did you get in the car yet? Oh, no, nah, you got something for me? Yeah, ice cream truck.
Stop to think about my life, wondering if it's even worth the stress and trying to strive. All I ever do is get high every day. Even sex my girl, then I sleep the rest of the way. I rarely comes out before night. I ain't employed. Why should I wake up early with the roosters in the morning? All I'ma do is smoke a sack of green and throw two or three rocks at that penitentiary. No one seems concerned about my well-being. It seems my life's already ended. That's why I'm spending so much time in the film board. I a kite. It's too late for me to try to live my life right. Man, if I should die today, who would really care? If I should die today, who would come and stare? If I should die today, who would carry me on my last day above dirt? And who would bury me? Damn, how will I die? How long will it last? Will you be happy and satisfied when you pass? Will you die young or old yes, and wise? If you face your killer, will there be tears in your eyes? Will you holler and we'll bang, scream and crawl? Will you die like a fraud or stand tall through it all? Will you fight if you're given that chance? Or will you fall up like a baby and shit? your pants damn you'll never know yeah, until it's your time you never know what you're going to do until that we got so, so you could miss me with that tough man trash until you're laying in the streets with hollow tips in this mess hot metal to the dome couldn't take me away i'm talking point blank right yes i'm still here someday nobody knows the troubles i've seen when i lay my head to rest i'm going to dance to me how will i die I'm in so much pain, it hurts my heart to wake up. I done lost my sense to gain a feel about to break up. Stress is eating that my mind is playing tricks again. It's telling me that I ain't kidding. It's telling me to quit. And what's worse, when I stop to think, I kind of agree. Even with one good eye, my future's hard to see. The end is rushing at me, homie, man, I'm damn near done. I try to duck, I try to hide, but man, I just can't run. It's like I'm trapped inside this world of mines and just can't wait. I'm overcome by suicidal thoughts, but damn, that's sick. I need my mama, cause she be always there by my side. To help me out when I ain't strong enough to make the ride. If I die, who will teach my sons right from wrong? If I die, who will teach my sons to stand strong? If I die, who will teach them nothing comes for free? I can't die, cause won't nobody teach them this but me. Damn, how will I die?
1 KPFT, the Damage Control Radio Showgram is live and in full effect.
<laughs> what it do, what it do. Everything's gravy, everything's gravy. Yes, sir, I'm here, I'm here. My first memory is a bill. I, I met him when I signed with Rap a lot. Actually, I met him beforehand at the Rhinestone Wrangler, of course, when Willie D was dogging everybody. Him and Romeo Poet in the gang, you know. Romeo Poet. Yeah, like that, man. And uh, as you know, Bill was a dancer. And, uh, later on, I um, signed with uh, James Smith over at uh, Rap a lot Records. At the car lot over there. Like that, and uh, Bill, um, uh, Ghetto Boys broke up, and uh, Bill became actually became a member of my group, the Two Bad Brothers. What? Yep, bad, yep, the Two, two bad, bad Brothers, not two bad, bad meaning bad, but bad, bad meaning good. good. You already know, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was '89, we signed, but we met him in '86, '88. Yeah. And uh, he, he, we, we, we was actually the first people to record Bushwick Bill. Yeah. Yeah, he was dancing. Uh, we just you know he we come over there. Uh, Jay had dropped him off with us. We you know we was hanging out with Jay, and uh, he dropped all of us off. Lockwood, oh, Lockwood, Cad Morales, and uh, so we uh hung out. You know we how we do it. You know we blowing big, having fun, freestyling, and we say, man, hip hop don't have nobody like you. They don't have nobody like you, man. You gonna be a rapper, man. You man, you gonna da 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 da. We just we later told him you told him you gonna be in movies. Yeah, you gonna do this? And he's like, man. And later on, he's like, man, you guys. Y'all said I was gonna do all these things, man, and you, and, and 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 I did. It. Yeah, and he did them. He's very thankful. On his, I was with him on his last days. I was there. Um, he has me all over his new project. That's right. You know, I'm I'm like six, seven songs deep. Mr. ESG's on there. Who's with us here today? What, what Bushwick Bill? What, what what Bill did in his last days was he <laughs> quote. I, I I said just to someone, Bill is looking out for the little people with these this, these works he did. He's looking, he builds taking care of the unsung, those who didn't get a chance. He didn't go get some of the popular big time super duper. All. He got those those who hadn't been super duper to national and whatnot and hadn't got a chance, man. You know that? And, and my, my brother has, has said a beautiful prayer for Bill while he was in the hospital. He said, uh, Bill, uh, you know, you, you you and the ghetto boys, and you, you got you, Bill, you put the world on your shoulders, man, and we stood on your shoulder. But now, you can stand on you ours. You, you can lift, lift you up. up. It was so beautiful, man. Y'all should have been down there. <laughs> Rim run. Yeah, well. <laughs> well, Willie. No, listen. There's all kinds of problems. There's all kinds of. There's, there's the, uh, the, the truth and the lie and somewhere in the middle. Well, Willie, look, 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 let me tell you like this here. I was the first one to record, Bill. A lot of people said that he probably should have rapped. You know what I mean? But I actually told Doug King over on 34th. You know what I mean? With the with the radio with the radio shack mic on the wall. That's right. You understand? Vicious Lee was there. Death Four was Death there. Four. They all know. And we put the mic on the wall. And Bill was supposed to open up the first eight to twelve lines. Oh, no, I and then they said, "Man, he don't sound right." But that's we said that's the way he sound. You know that he's Bush with Bill. Nah, he erased that, man. So they erased it. And then and when he came and hanging out hung out with us on Lockwood for three months. Uh, you know, he's part of the two bad brothers. We like to say we freestyle and going. We had faith, Mikey, that is. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the inside one now for Collins. We're like, with two C's, what up? But uh, we uh, what happened was James came and got him. You know, in the book, he say he people he used to be riding around with a midget in the fifth ward where he come got it from my house, fifth ward, and whatnot. And that's when he went out and he came back and uh, he was a rapper then. I'm like, well, what happened? I thought he didn't sound good, you know. But what it was is uh, he had a lot of practice over there with us, you know, freestyling, blowing big, you know what I'm saying, just hanging out in the wall, you know, doing fifth ward things, you know. And uh, and then so he was really seasoned and ready to spit it, you know. He was ready to spit it. But so I it, admit though, I admit when though, Willie wrote it for him. He that's was right. ready. That's, now now, now uh, uh, the story goes that some, you know, that Willie was the one that told him to. Well, that's he did because see, Willie did fifth, fifth war. That's right. Great minds think alike. Think alike. There you go. You so so oh, so it, it, so the story that you're hearing is not a lie. He's saying he's so many different uh, versions, versions of it. Of it. So he, this is the this is the linear version of it. Because I, I was just yeah. the first time to record him. Okay. That's yeah. all. That's all. Yeah, that's, that's it. All. Yeah. Well, I recorded him. I recorded him. Man, Doug King was on the radio shack on uh, wall right there. He was there. Doug King was there on Thirty Fourth Street. Cliff Bl called Cliff Blige. He'll tell you.
Why you think Bushwick? Why would you think Bushwick come back full circle and got me on six seven his last song on his album? That's right. I got a song called "They Don't Come Too Big" on his first album. I'm singing on Cop of the Cad. Some people will try to jack you. Yeah, some people will even kill you. So give it to them, y'all. That was me on there. And me and Big Mello was singing on, uh, why you wanna, with Bushwick, you know he's crazy. It was a lot of us in there on there. Yeah, hey, was in the I, I, I was in a fog, but I just now started having re <laughs> recollections. <laughs> That's right. Right. And it's sad when such a small handful of people get this credit. Oh man, I ain't got credit. I don't own no credit. Cause when you have credit, yeah, I want cash. I want credit. I know. You, get credit. you know, you owe when you get credit. I don't want to owe nobody. I don't want no credit. Right, right. Well, it happens like that, man, because everything's moved so fast, you know. So with this happening with Bushwick, man, uh, I had spoke with him like two or three days before uh, that Saturday before he passed. You know, he had called me and uh, he said, oh, Ron, Ron, I love you, Ron. I love you and your brother. You and your brother, man. I love you. I said, yeah, man. He said, I'll call you back, though. I'll call you back. And, and that was it. You know, and that was it. I hadn't talked to him. I didn't talk to him after that. So, but I love him and he know I loved him. And uh, we all just, we were just partners, you know, from the time he came to Houston and he ran into us. And I also want to give a uh, shout out to Reddy Red because Reddy Red played an That's intricate part. Old. He was Red always Red. cool with us. And we used to sit back and just, me, Bushwick Bill, Reddy Red, and Texas T, we just, you know, just did our little thing, you know. Yes, sir. Like three, two. Were, Rest in peace. Three, two. Beto. Beto. Yes. Beto one. And I saw the work that they did on that album. Mm -hmm. That was just yes. But yeah, well, talking about Reddy Red, so I'm saying with Reddy Red, yeah. he wasn't there at that time. He left, and I was always like, where, where is Red? Why isn't Reddy Red around here? Man, I love Reddy. So I love the Ghetto Boys, but I didn't know why he wasn't around. I didn't know all the details at the time. I was young. And later in life, I was blessed enough to meet Reddy Red and really sit down and have real, real, real conversations with him. Mm -hmm. He was one of the people who really broke down mm -hmm. so many stories, so many mysteries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm a when he passed away, that, I was in Europe with Devin McGee. We were in Europe, and, and the news came through that Red had passed. I didn't act. I knew that he wasn't totally, he certainly wasn't totally healthy, but I didn't know he was going through his health. Mm. And when I heard he died, that devastated me because Reddy Red definitely opened my mind up to so much of shit. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I that dude there, you cannot, you, that dude there is a man who needs to be celebrated. Uh, yeah, mm. you were sure right about that. What's the name of this show? Fantasy show. Yeah. Huh. All right. We started Zen and I, who also, I'm wearing him tonight. I brought him tonight on my shirt. Yeah. He's got made by DJ Chill. The DJ Zen and I were the founders of the show together in 2002. He was killed by a drunk driver, which killed me inside every day. Yeah. And also DJ JD, who was the first DJ who was on this show, who, who decided three weeks in that he couldn't, he had a job. He couldn't commit to being on Wednesday nights every... And so Zen and I were like, we're going to have different guest DJs every week. Like, Z uh, JD also passed when he was a DJ. Mm. Shit. 
chill. I mean that big time. Because chill came in at a time when we decided we were going to have a guest DJ every week. The whole point was going to be to showcase somebody else every week. Different DJ. And we did that for a while. Chill came in for the first time. And I wouldn't have it. As soon as I come back. No, listen. No, listen. When chill came in, this is real. This is real. When chill came in, we were still... Planning on having a different guest DJ every week, but when Chill came for the first time, he saw what we were doing here. He yeah. came again. He tried to bring an artist down. He was in all the clubs. He started really becoming an influential part of the show just by bringing artists right to his thing. Which mm-hmm. the point of damage control was this open door policy mm-hmm. to control the damage that was done by the major labels. Mm. And, uh, and uh, to give these artists a chance to come in. And Chill really did that. And I said to them, I was like, man, Chill's our DJ. Like that. And I was like, well, you want to do it? And Chill was like, hell yeah, I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and it became, you know, and I met Chill way before that because Chill and I were in the in the promotion team for a radio station whose name I've never said. <laughs> 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 and this is back in 91. Me and Chill in 91 were there when that station started and they were supporting the future rap. And they were really run by. They, were, they had a white dude with a mullet and a rush t shirt who, who was programming UGK and, and, uh, and, and, and real future rap at the time wow. to battle Magic 102 and destroy them. Yeah, and they, and, they, and they did, yeah. And now they're broke. They're the worst thing that ever happened in history, to Houston ever. The worst station ever in the history of, of uh, music. Oh man! Shout out to Trey the Truth, who always plays. Shout out to Trey the Truth, man. Anyway, King Dicky. Yeah. yeah. Boy, racist people driving with that station. Anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> well, <laughs> back, Chill came back. in here. No, Chill came in here and revolutionized damage control, and that's where we are here, 17 years later, still trying to represent for the real. And I'm telling you, I hate to say I come down here and make you just happy here to make this to say that. Somebody like Bishop Bill, no, I'm not going to sit home and, and let somebody like that in. Right. Yeah. Bishop Bill meant a lot to me, man. Entering our studio, seeing what went down, changed my life. The ghetto boys changed my life. Right. So, so, so when you go on, like, like yourself, Special T, and uh, DSG, and all these guys into doing this next project, what, what was going to be the name of the project? Do y'all know? It's uh, Checks, Balances, and Moral Turpitudes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Bushry had big words. You know, he was What'd a bit—he was a smart dude, man. And, you know, he, and he'll give you a so title. Bushry be on next project was gonna be called. Give it to him. Checks, too. balances, and moral turpitude. That's yeah. Checks, balances, and moral tor- turpitude. I might be messing up a little bit. It's something to that effect. Yeah, <laughs> well, we'll go to the dictionary. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And that's what he wants. He wants you to check. Bill wants you to check yourself. You know, yeah. you understand what I'm saying? Your moral turpitude. Mm-hmm. He wants one to be at their best, you know, and be godly while you're doing it. You know what I mean? So, absolutely. Yeah. We appreciate y'all coming down here and seeing us change history and giving the people some of the history. Y'all built and stood for near as soul and all that we did. Yeah. We served the show by being these great documents and remembering one of our most important pioneers in the future hip hop. Which was Bill. Which was Bill. Bill, your legacy will live forever. Little big man. No. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know where you show right about that, man. That's right. Yeah, we were there day one when he came in, man, and uh, in, to see him go through the transition of the Ghetto Boys, man, and continue to be. You know, he came through all the members. The members came off of, for, for various reasons, whatever, his business, you know. But uh, to Bushwick, to, he was truly a ghetto boy from his heart, man. He wanted to, uh, you know, really put that out to the world, man. He had a kind heart, man. He loved the homeless. He, he, he also expressed a lot of things he wanted to do for the homeless and for people with cancer since he found out he had cancer. But I'm speaking on things prior to that. You know, he had, talking about things prior to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he had a, a, a day one, day one. He knew the hip hop history, man, because he lived it. Yes. He lived it. You know what I'm saying? He knew New York, Houston, 
He knew California. He knew, and everybody knew him. Yeah. Snoop, they, you they, know. They said um, they, they got a clip of Snoop was saying that he and uh, Bushy Bill introduced him to the blunt. Who didn't he? Introduced he introduced us. Who didn't he? <laughs> he introduced us. The, 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 um, yeah. When you yeah. He he, <laughs> who didn't he? Snoop said that when he when, he, when Bushy Bill came down there, he opened up his blunt. Hey, Philly blunt. 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 And Phil did. And, and he and did the same thing with us back then. Then he moved the back. Nobody did them backwards. After backwards, that. <laughs> they were the back. That was some hard songs, too. And, 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 uh, and Ricky's were there for yeah. a big part of the recording of Dr. Dre's Chronic. Mm-hmm. Right. They were there, right. And you listen to Snoop Dogg's style, yes. and you say that that's not Ricky's style. Snoop's, hey, not. Snoop said it was. Snoop yes. said it was. Yes, yeah, Snoop said. Straight up. And let me tell you what, let me tell you where Bushwick told me the part that where you know it's at. He said at the end of uh, F School, when uh, 3 2 said about Willow Ridge, and the, the principal told him, don't come back. He said, let you fly, let's, let this bitch fly away. And that's what Snoop started picking it up right there. Listen to that. And that's and I'm telling you, that's what Bushwick told me, partner. Mm -hmm. After they come from LA and they wrote that chronic uh, uh, soundtrack. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. wow. What it do? What it do? Swang and bang. Uh, <laughs> what's yeah. going down? What's going down? Yeah, yeah of course. Mm. What it do, man? Oh, man. Um, a lot of people damn this girl might not even know uh, this story. But uh, I remember when I was a, a teenager, that was a guy. And I'm from Bogalus, Louisiana. Uh, oh, well. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm 45 minutes outside of New Orleans. So, uh, you know, a lot of people, like I call it La Texans. There's a lot of people that live in Texas that has Louisiana roots. So uh, this particular guy was riding one day, and uh, he used to always be out there, and he had a drop-top Corvette. And he was playing a Ghetto Boy song, one of the early songs. I, I, I can't remember what it exactly was. And I was like, man, what is that? You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I was a hip-hop fanatic since a kid. You know, I used to go to the record store buying everything. That's how I, dis I discovered most of my uh, influences, like the public enemies, the fat boys. I bought the fat boys album because of that. So this guy is playing. No yeah, this guy was playing <laughs> uh, uh, a ghetto boy song. And I hadn't heard nobody be that that really violent and gangster as a child. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, what is that? Like, man, the ghetto boys. Guy, he was he was from my hometown, but he had moved to Houston. And I was like, man, you know, I said, let me hear that. So I just fell in love with it. Then it was like, um, I don't know if a lot of people remember this. I was so young, but like the Royal Flushes and so many different. Yes, sir. Then I heard all, you know, the uh, the Gangsta Nips and uh, the Ra the Raheems and right. so many different songs. But the Ghetto Boys, um, they early worked. Cause I used to mail my tapes as a young child to New York and, and, and uh, LA, you know, when I was like 11, 12, I would rap, you know, I would look at the, the address on back of the tapes, yeah. wanted to be, yeah, man, you know, I would, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to be like the LLs and the ghetto boys. So, um, um, I couldn't make it to New York. I couldn't make it to um, LA. So my, my travels, I was like, uh, I, you know, uh, but I, you know, uh, I went, I went to, uh, I attended USA and Lafayette, and I kept getting closer and closer. So I called a cab actually to Houston, uh, a from La a cab man, like two hundred eighty dollars. I, oh, I, I wow. swear to God, because I knew, uh, you know, it was like that's the closest I could get to my dream. And the ghetto boys hearing that they was from there, you know, that 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 what kind of drove me there. Even though being from Louisiana, that's a true story. You know, a lot of people don't know that. And uh, man, I used to see Will so. Um, I mean, see him and Will and face way back then and in the later days you know bill you know because a lot of times this artist what i think is you you reach a level and be so great at a certain age and you don't like like to hear from a lot of other people take direction from people so you kind of be in a confused state of what you should do music wise when um you know you're in the creative capacity as i should say and so you know he had been holding music for a while just not knowing really what to do and that was you know some particular songs and i never forget some months back he was like look man i'm working on my album you know you're like hey man get that and i am so happy that i you know put down what i had to do and made sure that i turned my verse in 
because it did, you know, it's just already a sad day, you know, but it would have been even sadder, you know, we lose so many great people to hip hop. And a lot of times, if you look at it, so we've went through all these years of not praising a Bushwick Bill for the work, you know, and, and, and things that he put in, especially not just Houston, but hip hop, you know, these dudes was worldwide, man, You're talking about icons, these are people that our greats that other people look at, look up to when you hear the Snoop Dogg telling you this. I know all the stories from when uh, the, um, they was out there working on the chronic, you know what I'm saying? How Rick, Ru Rick Rubin and Russell Simmons, like you hear these stories, they come down here to Houston, they're like, they go to the club and they see how the Ghetto Boys has the people just jamming and they're like trying to, uh, how can I say this, not copycat, but emulate our sound. If mm -hmm. you look at a player like right. person like Mike Dean, who did all the, the work with these guys, these are people that that's Jay Z, Kanye's engineers. You know what I'm saying? People don't understand the magnitude of that. Mm -hmm. um, this is just this is my uh, hip hop birthplace. You know, I know that was the cool Herbs, what they did before before, but Houston, the independent game. And if you look back to the Southwest Hotels, why the the masterpiece, the cash monies, right. so many people, the tech knives that people don't know, there's so many people that uh, copycat the, 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 the format that mm -hmm. the LeJays did way back then, you know what I'm saying? And Ghetto Boys is a staple of hip hop, not just Southern hip hop. And, you know, honestly, you know, I think, you know, I hope people just really go out there and, and buy up anything that, that Bill has done and all the work that's coming out you know, just to further, uh, you know, help his legacy. Because, you know, he was a stubborn cat. And when you're a great artist, you become stubborn. You know, you don't want to fold or uh, confine to conform to what you see other people doing in hip hop. You know, that just wasn't him. You know what I'm saying? He was, he stuck to his roots. And, uh, no, no, I actually didn't. I, wow, well, I did a. Daddy O. Uh huh. DJ Premier. DJ, oh my God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, that's crazy. Nah, that's 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 legacy. That's legacy. You know what I'm saying? Of course, man. I just got sent a link that from Billboard that Eminem did a little. He did a tribute. I did like a whole thing of tribute to Bushwick Bill. There was no listen. There would be no D12 and and horrorcore and all these things. Without Gangsta Lip, Bushwick Bill, before right. Bushwick, yeah. and, and Gangsta Lip and stuff like that, there would be no... Mm -hmm. For real, for real. Yeah, yeah, for real. Without that. Yeah, it's so ahead of the time. So, he so ahead of the time. For real, for real, you know. And so it's nice to see, you know, I mean, it's sad that it, it's come back without after it. You know, mm -hmm. someone like an Eminem has to. Right. Know, that's real. That's real. That's real. That's great. Right. Have to give it up to the greats. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you'll see it in 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 uh, upcoming in upcoming coming in tomorrow night. If Houston had had an insane insane influence on hip hop culture mm -hmm. from day two. Right. Not day one. <laughs> day one but the first day. Right, but yeah. After people were looking at, at I mean, Sue Cornell. Mm -hmm. These are. Right, From right. Here. Yeah, there's so many other people that don't get credit. Making, getting the records to all the DJs across mm -hmm. the United States. Yeah. With records. Yeah, man. That's, That's crazy. That's a big deal. That's a big, big deal. This is before many of us were really even totally involved. Exactly. Exactly. Way before my time. Before my time. Before my time. <laughs> you know. Uh, but the independent game and just the music of being sticking to your roots and sticking to your sound, you know was a Houston thing, you know what I'm saying? And, and and it's just embedded in hip hop and you can't erase it or go around it, no matter how you try, you know. Before you seen the NWAs being violent and all that, you, you saw the ghetto boys doing that. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. You, that was never the lift like I laugh at the the, the cameos and some of those R and B artists, how we talk about some of the, a lot of the young artists how they dress and stuff like that, that was different. You know, the ghetto boys and just hip hop right here in A-Sound, there are so many other greats that that, 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 that didn't get the nation, national notoriety that 
embedded that strict hardcore style of Houston hip hop. You know, all the way back to uh, Jason's lyric. You know, that's uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I remember that name. I remember that name. So, yeah, remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying, yeah, you know, yeah. Feast I mean, got chill is seventy five. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Matt. Matt is a dinosaur, also. <laughs> He's a hip hop dinosaur for real. Muhammad Two G? No, uh, there's so many people out here to see. Uh huh. You need some coffee. Oh, he trying to go back, back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no blood. No blood. Thank you. Thank you. You heard? You know? You, that's what I'm talking about. That's Yes. Right. He say it publicly. He say I can I'll make most other boys for the minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was about twenty nineteen. I, <laughs> I just, I just requested for for ESG and Flip to go. Just give yeah, me, give me an hour. Give yeah. me an hour. <laughs> Y'all ready? Uh, appreciate you. Number love, man. Mm. Uh, knew I was. That was my first record came out. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Ocean of Funk. Ocean of Funk. Album, you know. Steve Caldwell. That was a year after that. That was Selling the South came out. Selling the South came out. I just, you know, by the time you heard of me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. It's going down. It's going down. It's in the beginning, in the beginning. You know. Right, right. For real, for real. God, you know, I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. I, I, I found the formula. Uh, I found the... Uh, how can I call it? The Benjamin Button Juice. So it's going down, you know. There's so much more to go, you know. I'm just, you know, steady, steady, keep, you know, crossing bridges and pulling up bridges with me, man. I'm just happy, you know, that I can, uh, it, just, it has to be in your heart. It has to be in you, embedded in you to respect the craft, respect the art, no matter what goes down, no matter what you hear on uh, radio, uh, you know, mass media. You know, you stick to your roots and stick to you who you are. That's why those are the artists that continue to win and strive uh, to this day. And it's coming back around. So there's so many artists on major labels that would love to be able to do what we are doing right now. Mm -hmm. So it's like the reinvention of the computer. And <laughs> we are here. It's going down. <laughs> All our people are sweet. Appreciate you guys. Y'all guys are great. Number love. I do, I do. And I'm gonna go through them really quickly so you guys be listening. Yes. Dang. Yes, 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 yes. So, so, real quick, you guys be listening. If you want to write into us, you can write into us at 419. 
L O V E T T Boulevard, Houston, Texas, 77006. And I'm going to get through these shout outs real quick to Rico on the Polanski unit, Adolfo the Estes unit, to Black Reap on the OL Luther unit, to Marlo on the Wynn unit, to Edward Big Hands, and to Slim on the Gory unit, to Gregory on the Ferguson unit, to William. Uh, this is Midway, so I think it's Ferguson unit as well. And to GP on the Ferguson unit as well. And there, there's more. Um, you guys have a list of shout outs on here, so I will do those lists next week. But tonight, I really don't have time to do these whole lists. So I'll do these lists next week. Okay, guys? I have clients at 8.30 every Thursday morning. Yeah, let's do that. You know, I was talking. Wait, can we play that the one you just got? Yeah, can we play that one? Play. Ever clear, ever. Yeah, ever so clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Line one.
Cole Chris was the person who told me about you first, and yep, then we yep. met. We met like the next week. I remember Cole Chris told me about you, and like the next week you showed up and you just made my shit. So I met you yep. like right then. I remember, I remember going to your house when I came out there to do that show, and uh, I never get chill. DJ Chill, my boy, man, he he actually DJ my my set. Man, Fatal uh, performed in the backyard. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he performed at our first damage control benefit in the backyard yeah. at KPFT, and, yeah, uh, and, and, and to this and day. Chill.
talking about that freestyle and all that. It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great freestyle thing. So I'm an hour ahead of y'all. And I'm also getting old, so I got to get in bed and shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, If it wasn't for a city like Dallas, if it wasn't for Austin and San Antonio's support of these Houston artists, Tyler, yeah. uh, La Review, places like this, it, it wouldn't be what it is, man. I mean, so we appreciate you calling and giving your insight. OG Fatal. Love y'all. Y'all keep your head up. Keep doing what you do, man. Appreciate you. It's a quick musical break. We've been playing this uh, ever so clear. It's not over and over and over and over. Yo, so again, ever hear. so clear. That's one of the, the defining moments uh, yeah, yeah. for that man, District Bill. And also, let's not forget. Let's let's say this before we finish. One, District Bill shot himself in the eye and survived. He lost an eye, but he survived. And later, District Bill had gone into the hospital with complications and things and was pronounced dead and lived. The man came back to life. This is Bill is not a simple person, man. This is not a you know, you, you this man is not the average human, man. No, no. This is Bill is beyond fatal and everyone else who's calling in tonight. Thank you so much. We got a few more people to talk to right here in the studio. We've got some people who collaborated with him on this album right here. Get some information on what's what's yet to come. My brother Bubba. My brother Bubba who is taking over uh, Bubba. Hubba Bubba. Okay, got it. I got the heart. That is. That is. Nah, man. What about my brother? Y'all see this guy right here? This guy <laughs> right here? This guy right here, right here? We come to my birthday party and freestyle and have a, a whole concert wow. on stage with no problem. No problem. My yeah. brother from another mother right here. He gonna come. He gonna come DJ my birthday next time. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, get ready, get ready for the show, right? Yeah, going down, man. We about to launch everything June twenty week. June twenty seventh, the whole week down. Yeah. yeah so we gonna we gonna uh, damage control is gonna be a part of it. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. I'm gonna come out of retirement for real that's quick. That's what we got going on. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna come out of retirement for a minute. Only yeah, for this yeah. guy right here. Doing what I said. You know what I'm saying? Um, can you still use the mixer? <gasps> no, I'm playing with him. I'm playing really, bro? <laughs> I'm playing with him. Really, bro? You know, he don't want that, that that young, young cry. Really, so bro? I'm, yeah, I'm messing with him. I'm bringing him. I'm making him bad. Not bad. Him. Okay, so, so bad. okay, so Skylar don't know this right here. Yes, yeah, So, she don't know this right here. Mm-hmm. But tell her about Boomerang. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's like the... Uh, is that the one like that a, you had to hold the roof up when you guys It's today? like, like if, 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 if uh, legendary break dancers went somewhere, uh, the feet of artists went somewhere, uh, somewhere, you went somewhere. If you was rapping on the south side and trying to make it as a young up-and-coming artist, 
Boomerang was the spot. Oh my God, yep. that was the battlefield. Yeah, show after show, put yes. it down, yes. put it down. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. Matter of fact, uh, that's where the record started at. Yeah, not on yeah. the radio. It started right there in the club uh -huh. on Cullen and Cullen and Sixteen. Picked it up from the streets. Yeah. Organic. That's Organic. No, no internet. Connection with the fans. No internet, none of that. None of that. Yeah. And you can catch this guy on Colored and uh with Colored and Arm at the at the park on a Sunday. Um, hanging we out. We everywhere. I didn't hold Southside. Yeah, it used to be going down right there, man. <laughs> everywhere, man. We we actually trying to bring so many uh uh, revamp the hood, you know, bring yeah. some more business and stuff to the hood, so it's going down. We got a big battle we're going to announce, so yeah. know, maybe like a week or so from now, so be prepared. You know, Scarlett's going to gonna come in, she's going to hold the numbers. Round one, <laughs> round two. And I, and I have a, a new format. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait to see this. Uh, yeah. The true right. essence, the true, the realness. This is something that we need, wow. and this is going to bring a whole new idea look and style to the city. Okay, so check this out. Also, too, Scott, you didn't know These two. That, that when I had my TV show on TV, this man came and performed live. Boy, Chill, chill is really beef. <laughs> My invoice is gonna be so. I'm gonna be so wealthy. I got really? so many stories. Oh lord! I got a favorite bunch of things. I'm gonna give me some bunch of shirts. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling me all the things to use to get a cut. You know I'm just playing. Yeah, yeah. Of course, man. We've been rocking a long time. You know what I'm saying? You actually in the movie too. I got you in the movie. Sunday news, June 20th. You know, you got your camera on the movie. Oh, you shit. That. <laughs> it's going down. Yo, that, yo, dude, dude's really doing his thing. Slim. Which one? The, the, um, your, your, your cousin. Yeah. Yeah, Kayla. Yeah, Kayla. He's great. Yo, he's doing yeah. his thing. He played uh, the, other, the Christmas movie we got. We got some more stuff that's coming out. He was, uh, he was, he was uh, doing, the, uh, doing uh, commercials now. Yeah, he's been to, yeah, yeah, man. He's, and and, and he's he was just at, a, he was just in, uh, at the Astro, me at the, um, uh, Astros Arena, whatever. Yeah, yeah, he's serious about it. Yeah, yeah, he's serious about it. He, he puts a lot of work in. Jeez. Yeah. You thought we just showed up at your house. <laughs> That's what he's trying to say. He thought we were going to show the move with the iPhone. But it's going what? down. What? Dr. Swain. Hold up, my G. You good? Yeah. Yeah. Had someone had me do the uh, hung up on my baby for an instrumental track, so I already had it. Mm -hmm. He came in while we were mixing what you did for us. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, he right. just he not he, he came in looking for somebody else, and I was like, hey, this, you know. He got him. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. Conscious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's funny too, cause when I went, I was nervous when I went to the studio. I thought we we're gonna, it's gonna be coming in and out. And he's like, hey, I need to go here. I need to go here. Mm -hmm. I hung out with him for three hours before we did anything. No shit. I was, yeah, I was like, I'm his driver. I'm like, well, honored. You know? I feel, I feel <laughs> What it do, man? These headphones is the truth. They're not really lit, can't they? No, man. You just fucked my bread. So cruel. <laughs> we were talking about earlier. Oh, 
gets so exciting to me when I actually like know someone, you know, because it's like, like on a night like this, yeah. I was like, I'm not gonna know anyone. Right. So for E to show up, I'm like, yes. Sweet. Yes. Night shining on you. Yes. 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 My friend shows up. Don't leave. <laughs> You can stay longer, right? Yeah, stay here, stay all night. Yeah, make you a cop. Yeah, exactly. Do you need a blanket? I can go get one. I think I have a pillow in the car. The lives we leave. I know. I'll make a story of it. The reality. It's not what you think. <laughs> no, that's what everyone always says to me. They're like, you have such a full life. You do so much. You, everything's so exciting. I'm like, man, we wrap it up. Yeah, fine. Like, I'm always working. I'm always around people. I don't know. It's funny. It's hard funny. Generally funny people. You know, there's a hard funny guy. He's a funny guy. I'll do my pouty face, we'll see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> Is my potty face working? Wow. I said, Is my potty face working? <laughs> we were just talking because we were like, earlier we were talking about how we're always working. Because he was like, How have you been? And he was like, I'm always so busy, and you're always so busy, and we don't see each other and stuff. And so we were just talking, and, and I was like, he was like, oh, you're so happy he's here. I'm like, I'm so, ha I'm so happy to have a friend. I was like, I didn't think I would know anyone tonight. Like, I'm just so happy that a friend is here. So excited. And then as soon as I said that, they called you in there. And I was like, no, don't go. And he was like, he was like, yeah, we'll make you a cot. <laughs> I was like, I think I have a blanket in the car. Like, we were teasing, right? And so, <laughs> and so I said, if I do the potty face, will he come back? <laughs> and so we were, like, just teasing here. <laughs> So he was standing here for a while, and I was like, he's not looking. <laughs> he was like, yeah, in this business, like, you appreciate when you actually have, like, friends and when you get to be around your friends because you're always busy and you're, like, crossing paths and you're not, you know, you're not talking about <laughs> Are you gonna go to that? Um, and it may not even be your thing or whatever. So, but that gloves uh, up, guns down thing on Friday. 
boxing so, third war emancipation it's like some boxing yo where's the don't know about it where's the producer Cal Wayne posted it but I guess it's um, at a boxing place that a lot of yeah I know they got the spot down yeah I'm uh I'm in town and then um, Sunday I'm gonna go to the Father's Day I'll be doing that Sunday. But Friday, I'm going to go over. I don't know who I'm going to play. I don't put it on like the side, but I'm going to take like cases of bottled water. Because I, I figure they're going to need water. My wife is awake. I would have gotten the text. I want to support it somehow. <laughs> but I don't know how. So. I'm still kidding. <laughs> I can't believe it. You talk, Bruce? Not really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's nervous. I want to play the Houston Heights song so that I can play the Houston Heights song. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, my sister, I ain't gonna lie. Back and back and back. Double H, love that. Are you gonna be reading out of your video? Oh, you ain't be reading out of your video. I know I haven't even been Sorry. paying attention. It's the radio said we had to follow a lot of I think he's on mine. Yo, DJ DMD, what's up, man? What? 25 lighters on my dress up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo, yo. DJ DMD, what up, man? What? Yeah, DJ D, D, DMD said, uh, Mr. Dory Dossi said, uh, R.I.P. Bush was real, man. Big up, DJ DMD. He's something as well, R.I.P. Incredible legend. Man. He's contributed so much to the game. Yeah. To what we have here in Houston, Texas now, in Texas as a whole, man. He is a whole lot. So, VA. We got Kay Skrilla in the house. Mm -hmm. Kay Skrilla did, uh, produced uh, about half the Bill record and did most of the engineering. And, uh,
30 of them. Yes, indeed. That and was right. Just started coming in to uh, Sugar Hill to record. I didn't know, and maybe you didn't even know at the time. But I, I did. I, uh, I know you know, I, I, uh, I'd only known Bill a couple of months, if that, before then. You know, I met him uh, right after the new year when he went into the hospital, and uh, I think I knew Bill was sick before Bill knew Bill was sick. You know what I mean? Like. Um, it was just, you know, one of those things. So I knew, you know, Bill was floating around from studio to studio just trying to get work done, and I I just knew I had to let him in and just let him record and record and record and record and record, yeah, you know, just yeah. get as much done as we can because, you know, I hoped, of course, for the best, but, you know, just in case. Yeah. Hey, Phil, how did you get involved with this with Bill? Uh, well, I was just hanging around the studio helping out with whatever needed to be done, and then... I think I came over there after a gig one night, and Bill and Bubba were outside, and he introduced me, told him I was a guitar player, and he wanted me to get on a track. <coughs> and then, a lot, actually. oh yeah, a whole bunch. <laughs> and then, a few days later, they needed somebody to engineer a vocal session with Bill, so I stepped in, and that was about five months ago, five or six months ago. And it was almost every day since then. And Chris Waters, too, right? Yeah. Chris Waters is who I met that day. That we were all at when we were at Studio Hill and we were trying to get the studio to come back home. Tell me a little bit about these last few months with Bill, man. Tell me a little bit about what we can expect from this album. Bubba? Um, well, there's a lot of interesting stuff on this record. Of course, you're going to get the classic hip hop. You know, like Bill really wanted to make a lot of classic hip hop tracks. You know, in the vein of like Rakim and the Ghetto Boys and, you know, all the stuff he loved growing up in New York, in, you know, Houston and everything. Uh, he did a very gangsta, you know, uh, reggae track. Right. He did a couple country tracks. Right. He's done a lot of covers, you know, as well as a lot of like, you know, it's a, it's some interesting stuff for sure, man. Um, you get a good feeling for where Bill was in his journey as well you know there's a lot of positive stuff there's a lot of reflective stuff um you know about his situation and uh you know the the stuff he did with tretch really really good the stuff he did with esg really good man really catchy listen to rap Tretch he had some hits he had some real big hits mm -hmm. but when you only listen to those you don't realize how incredible of an MC Tretch is mm -hmm. to this day but Tretch was one of those groundbreaking MCs just like ESG was for us kind of you know still is still is I mean not was yeah is <laughs> you're still here man. <laughs> 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 Hey, hey. <laughs> oh, for sure, man. No, come on, man. You don't get these people on these lists, man, but like Tretch. Tretch, especially, has never been on like a top ten list that I've seen. And that dude has developed styles upon styles of being so insane. Anyways, but let's, let's talk more about this one. All right. <laughs> yeah, because he was about to go in on you. I, we, we were, I guess, lucky enough to kind of get to know Bill and work with Bill like after Bill had quit the drinking. You know what I mean? So Bill is always Bill. You know, um, you know, he's a headstrong, uh, you know, not shy kind of person. But uh, without the sort of extra alcohol fuel, it was, you know, it was a pleasure. You know, quite honestly, he was an angel in my life, quite honestly. I mean, ever since Bill started showing up, just, like, good thing after good thing was happening. And, 
you know, would sit and talk with Bill about life and, you know, philosophical things about the history of hip-hop, about history in general, about theories, about why. It was great. Man, I, I it was a truly a, a wonderful, wonderful experience for me. Henry. Yes. That's right. Uh, I was on the Luther unit in Navasota. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I was friends with Wali, uh, with, with Zen. Yep. I met him in 2000, did music with him then. And uh, Ray Hill introduced me to, the, to this show, well, to his show, uh, the prison show in 2001. Yeah, yeah Ray. Um, he, he changed my life. Uh, big, big influence for me. And, um, you know, in 2002, I started, you know, I, I was listening to KPFT all the time. It helped me stay. You know, stay out of the day room, stay out of trouble. I, I just, you know, loved all the different programming. So it's, it's good to be back here, and it's good to actually finally meet you after 17 years. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was I was actually up at Sugar Hill a couple months ago uh, doing a track with ESG on my project, and that's when I met Bill for the first time, and, and it was a, a couple months later that we were mixing it, and, um, and, and uh, Bill walked in the door looking for Skrilla, and and I, I already had uh, hung up on my baby an instrumental version that I, I had covered for a, a, a for a documentary, and I, I I spoke to him about it, and uh, and two days later we were in the studio, and but before we were in the studio, uh, I got the pleasure of driving him around for about three hours, and I, I had no idea what I was in store for when you know I thought I you know I've done many sessions, uh, and I I thought I was going to show up. You know he's gonna rap over this. It's you know he's familiar with it. He's gonna do whatever he does, and you know it's like I, I got to. I'm I'm not gonna tell y'all what we did, but it, it was just an honor to to get to hang with him. And I had no idea the depth of. Uh, I, I I had no idea what he was like. You know I just in you know my introduction to him of course was Ghetto Boys, and uh, for me it was 1991, and and it wasn't on the radio. It was it was in the lunchroom. Hearing people rapping it, and I was like, "What is this? I've got to, I've got to check this out." Yeah, and um, so uh, I, I'm just, I just think it's really cool that it worked out. I, I had, you know, the, none of that was planned. None of that, um, you know, to, to 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 get to to meet him and and then work with him and and um, uh, and and it's, you know, I think it's looking like it's going to be a part of, you know, how how are they going to release the release the 30 40 you know 100 tracks that he did at the, at the end whatever that looks like Uh, right now, the family is working it all out. Um, they've got investors that are putting out the record, and uh, we're not sure exactly whether they're going to divide it into two records or maybe even two records and some singles and stuff. Oh, okay. But um, you know, it's going to be probably something out in the next you know few months, yeah. and then probably something else in the next year. But I don't know. I don't know exactly what the plan is. But you know, we won't let them get bootlegged. We were hoping to play us some music tonight, but you know, they they asked us not to. Indeed. Because I'm not gonna use that. Right. Right. Anyway, hey Skrilla, how did you come together? How did it all come together? In the studio, he came in. Uh, yeah, he came in, and he was already working with other people, and they would be busy, so. And I wasn't busy at the time, <laughs> so we would, I would record his vocals, and he liked the way I worked. He, you know, did you already have beats for him when you recorded his vocals, or what, he was mm -hmm. like a or what was uh, I was just engineering vocals. He had okay. he had beats with other guys in the studio, okay. and you know there was a point we had finished all those, and I was 
I was there early one morning waiting for him to show up, and I actually made the first beat I've ever made. <laughs> and then he came in later that evening. I played it for him, and him and Tony came up with a hook, and then he freestyled, I think, six verses in a row. And then we've gone over those with other features now, but I don't know. That's just how it went. Oh, yeah. He, he had at least I mean, a dozen people. I'll tell you, him. like, um, you know, uh, Bill, like I said, is very headstrong, very much wanted to wait. You know, some, some artists will come in and pay a producer or work with a producer in order to get the producer's ideas and his flavor and everything. Like, Bill, you know, very much wanted to do things his way, so him and Kevin found a way to, you know, Kevin would help Bill get his ideas out the way Bill wanted them, you know, and uh, Bill just loved it. He loved, he, you know, Kevin's an awesome guy. He loves Kevin, trusted Kevin quite a bit. And, uh, you know, just having, Kevin plays most instruments quite well. So um, there's a lot of live instruments on this record. Okay. And uh, so, I mean, that's kind of just how they got together and, and started working pretty regularly together. Um, well, speaking of that, Perfect. Of course. He sent me a song. Speaking of, this isn't my only thing from there. This is a song that he sent me. Check this out, man. And I'm going to shout out to my girl who has. He threatened to stab me once. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Who is he not threatened to stab me? <laughs> track you wouldn't you would you're not gonna um, you're not gonna expect this i don't know if uh, we're gonna have a little extra time after two yeah. that's gonna happen we, we chill we should because we, yeah. we got a reggae time hey. Hey. I want to say good night, guys, because I will not be here past two o'clock. <laughs> so good night, guys. Good night.